Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Okay. I hope uh, you all had a good weekend uh, and looking forward to the week of learning. Uh, so, a very warm welcome to you. The entrepreneurship development program on fostering startup innovation and entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship. Uh, we have with us uh, today uh, eminent people, uh, the Vice Chancellor of Andhra ST, Honorable Vice Chancellor Sri uh, Prasad Reddy Garu. Uh, then we will have uh, a registrar, uh, uh, yeah, registrar have been charged, uh, uh, Bab Garu. Uh, we also have online uh, official and special duty. Uh, Professor V. Uh, Krishnamohan Garu also uh, today. Uh, so, uh, we would, uh, uh, before uh, giving it uh, on and passing it on for the uh, honors, uh, honorable guests of today's function, uh, I would just like to give a quick brief of the, of the five days program that we are starting off from today. Um, we have uh, eminent speakers. Uh, we're talking about uh, people talking on for startup ecosystem, uh, Praveen, um, uh, Praveen uh, who is co-founder of Social Hub. Uh, then we have Dr. Divya, who is also online, uh, who is the CEO of JSS uh, uh, Science and Tech Park, uh, Delhi. Uh, she's going to talk on uh, startup uh, and uh, the academic and entrepreneurship, uh, the relationship and the, eco, the, the, the collaborative ecosystem. Uh, and then we get into the different stages of uh, startup, uh, the formative stages uh, where Rajneesh, uh, who is the CEO, ex-CTO of Company Science Corporation, is going to talk on that. Uh, then uh, that's that's the sessions for today. And tomorrow we have uh, Fani Patamata, who is going to talk of, uh, is going to take two continuous sessions, uh, talking on validation and growth or exit. Uh, then we have uh, the last session for tomorrow, uh, where it's on startup funding. Uh, which uh, Anudeep, uh, Anudeep, who is the Associate Director of Thai AP, would be taking uh, things forward. Uh, then we have on the 8th uh, December, uh, we have uh, How Do You Identify uh, Aspiring Entrepreneurs? Uh, that's Srinivas Severam, who is a partner of Indigenous Consulting. Uh, then uh, followed by Validating Student Startup Ideas, uh, which uh, Deepak Madala, uh, PhD from Iowa, and then uh, Director of Alco Partners, is going to talk on that and then uh, how to deliver startup awareness programs uh, by Kiran on the, the last session, which is session nine on uh, 8th December. Uh, on the 9th, hello, can you mute yourself, please? Yeah, uh, on the 9th, uh, we have uh, uh, Professor uh, Javed from IIM uh, Vizag, uh, who is also the chair uh, for entrepreneurship development, uh, talking on uh, um, on startup uh, incubation and the concept and concept of ecosystem. Then I, uh, Ravi Shwarapu, the CEO of AU Incubation Center, would be talking about AU Incubation Center, which is and how it is uh, helping the, the local startup and incubation systems grow and what are all the, the uh, overview and policies, procedures and support systems that are there. Then we have uh, uh, Hima Bindu, who is the uh, head of operations, CEO for Novel Patent, talking about patents and intellectual property. On, uh, and on the last day, we have uh, session one, uh, which is on handling stress by Professor uh, V. Krishna Mohan, who is officer on special duty at Andhra University and ex-registrar. Um, then, uh, then we will have a panel discussion with an interaction with startups, stakeholders of the ecosystem. Uh, which is chaired by Peter Schienberger, uh, uh, yeah, who is the CEO of Samudra Soft. And uh, eventually, the, we will close on the Friday, uh, which is where we'll have a review, feedback, and a validatory function, which will be chaired by uh, Dr. Ramon Rao, who is the vice chairman of uh, uh, APSHI AP State Council for Higher Education. Um, before uh, we get into, uh, thank you, thank you, uh, one and all, for. Uh, being a part of this program, uh, I would also give you a little bit of participant analytics, uh, how many people have registered and are now part of this uh, uh, session for the next five days. Uh, so uh, we have about 152 people who have registered and are going to be part of this uh, uh, officially registered, but we also have the YouTube links which have been sent out where a lot of startups are watching it live. Uh, which are not part of the participant list, official participant list, but there's an additional uh, 
uh, 80 to 100 people who would be joining on to different sessions based on interest and then uh, would be uh, viewing the sessions as we go forward. Uh, so if you're talking about the distribution of the participant uh, profile, uh, talking about 94 males and uh, 58 females, about a 62 to 38% distribution, uh, healthy uh, participation from the female uh, or, uh, yeah, party, uh, yeah, uh, segment, you can call it. Then based on uh, the primary branch of knowledge, uh, we have engineering at 49% uh, of them uh, are from engineering background. Uh, man management and commerce about 29%, sciences about 21% and arts about uh, 2%. Um, but again, a healthy um, mix of uh, participants. Uh, now uh, we have, uh, if you're talking by profession, uh, the largest contingent is about 82 people are assistant professors, followed by 23 people who are associate professors, 21 professors. Uh, then we have nine students, uh, research scholars, about four of them and three entrepreneurs two mentors and coaches, uh, then we have lecturers, uh, senior grade and postgraduate teachers, associate deans, directors, research assistants, and resource persons. Together, about 152 people. That's the uh, demographic uh, segmentation. Then finally, uh, okay, great. Uh, uh, you can say uh, cross-representation from all over India, 15 states being represented in this uh, uh, FDP, uh, largely um, uh, about uh, near 50% from AP, uh, then about 11% from Karnataka, Maharashtra 9%, Tamil Nadu 9 uh, UP about 6 and then uh, uh, you have people from Telangana, Chandigarh, Punjab, Madhya Pradesh, Assam, Kerala, Delhi, Odisha, Rajasthan, uh, Puducherry and Uttarakhand. So uh, a very uh, healthy mix. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, happy learning to all of you. Uh, with that, I would, uh, um, I would probably uh, the busiest man today uh, around here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being with us. Uh, so uh, I would pass on to uh, Vice Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor. Before that, a quick uh, one minute introduction. Uh, I would, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Professor uh, PVG uh, Prasad Reddy Garu, uh, who's, uh, I would say, uh, all in one personality. Oh, uh, about me. Uh, yes, no, just two, just a minute, sir, because people need to know your relevance to the this thing. Uh, um, uh, so, entrepreneur is been a software engineer, uh, a, a, a faculty professor, uh, administrator. Uh, I would say now a visionary and a person who has been uh, driving the vision of the AU incubation at uh, Andhra University. Over to you, sir. So good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Quite happy to be there in the midst of all of you. Good morning. Yeah, somebody said good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. And uh, request all of you to okay, keep your systems under mute for some time. So quite happy to be present in the midst of all of you. And I understand that uh, Andhra University, under the convenership of uh, Dr. Ravi Ishwarapu, currently the CEO of uh, the startup cell of Andhra University, is organizing, in fact, a, an entrepreneurship development program, EDP program, uh, okay, fostering the startups, innovation, and uh, entrepreneurship for the next coming five days. Quite happy to understand about 152 participants, and you know, 80% of them are from okay, various universities. And about 50% of them are from engineering colleges. And okay, I'm also quite happy to understand that uh, about 20% uh, of them are from commerce and management and okay, the arts kind of okay, a department. And about 25% uh, are from science departments. You know, it's, it's a very really a very healthy mix. And uh, I also understand that uh, uh, the content okay, of this particular uh, FDP is also uh, being telecast through YouTube channels. It's a very good sign. I'm quite happy because, uh, you know, 152 participants, okay, out of which about 80% are from universities or from okay, educational institutions is a very, very good sign. Tell you, okay, the reason. You know, today, the new education policy is also emphasizing on uh, 
what is called as you know entrepreneurship over the last uh, for 25 years also because I, i am there okay in the university for the last uh, 34 years I, in fact you know i served with the department of computer science as a professor uh, prior to coming to this uh, particular you know administrative role as vice chancellor and i have seen in my own department you know 34 years you know of transformation okay uh, okay with reference to students the last 25 years more or less you know most of the students they they always you know look for some kind of a placement opportunity on the campus that means a student okay who joins okay any particular course okay in the university or in any college because you know under the university there are so many affiliated colleges and all so the orientation of a student or the orientation of a parent is always with reference to a, a job but uh, the trend is okay in fact uh, slowly changing and uh, you know this is okay for the good of the country that way that today on the campus at least okay i am able to see uh, some percentage of the students uh, who wish to provide a job rather than you know a seeker of the job this is in fact a very very good trend okay that is being observed okay on uh, the campuses of uh, educational institutions because the educational institutions should have a vision a vision in the sense you know to bring in uh, the required uh, uh, the social uh, or environmental change and at the same time uh, apart from uh, uh, giving okay normal academics okay in the classroom it is the duty of okay the educational institution to strengthen the individuals okay on the campus as well as the local organizations and you know enable them okay in fact to provide uh, some simple solutions to the complicated problems uh, that uh, the society currently is facing as such okay you look around today there are so many issues uh, and especially okay india being uh, a country which is just a developing country it's not a developed country right so in a developed country okay, suppose okay you say that there are no opportunities that is acceptable to some extent but in a developing country i would say that you know you just you know look around you have so many issues so many problems uh, when there are so many issues and so many problems uh, okay why not okay we empower our student to look around okay identify a problem and you know come out with a solution okay that that should be okay in fact you know the motto of education today as propounded by you know the new education policy 2020 and uh, you know in that direction it is the duty of okay the teachers to first of all you know understand the dynamics of uh, entrepreneurship rather than probably i think calling some corporates uh, at the end of you know third year and probably i think through them okay organize some kind of a written test and interview send okay all our most meritorious people to join as you know maintenance support engineers it is okay the duty of the teachers today to probably i think identify some of the students you know who have got this kind of an aptitude right in the very first year of their entry into the university this this is okay the real important need and hence you know today uh, in fact government of india is also talking about imparting skills and uh, 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 enable okay the student to also participate in vocational education uh, vocational education in fact is also important apart from normal education because the skill is important a you know, skill without okay uh, education because you know per se education today we are looking at it only as a degree but you know degree is really important but you know the skill is much more important because most of the times what is happening okay uh, is that you know a student typically uh, he understands what is archimedes principle but you ask him okay how does the shift float uh, most of this two times you know a student fumbles okay this this kind of a system is being okay imparted across okay india so it is time that we need to probably i think think differently in the classroom and also okay identify those people who have got that kind of an ability to probably i think stand up not only just normal academics but also an entrepreneurship today we are talking about internships right we are talking about project works i am in fact you know while talking to you i am getting this particular idea why should we ask a student to go for internship why should we ask a student only just to do a project work what is happening okay my own observation is that when you ask him to do a project work he is going and coming okay back with some 300 pages of text which is of no use in a way instead probably i think we can ask him to go and work for some time somewhere 
and come back with the relevant experience and whatever that relevant experience okay that he obtains let him put it okay in the form of text that would add value to him rather than looking at you know uh, the, the 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 text material okay that which he is submitting okay i will in fact you know talk to my own deans okay to think okay in those lines entrepreneurship okay my own okay way of thinking i tell you okay when i was a student of this university or my okay initial 10 years of okay my existence on the campus entrepreneurship okay even to do even to today also i believe that you know it requires some kind of an ecology or some kind of a support in the sense you know uh, look at okay a, a doctor who is running a nursing home per se right if a doctor is running a nursing home and he is a child once he becomes a doctor for him is it is very easy to probably i think get into that particular business and move it further because you know he is able to understand and figure out the steps that are required to in fact you know conduct that business and take it forward similarly you look at some affluent people who are already in the business they are you know children can always you know effortlessly take over the business or even start some new business and you know move further why the reason is that you know the family is already exposed to business the family has got some kind of a business history and hence you know their children they understand the business language the business dynamics and they can always you know get into that and take it forward on the other hand if you look at a normal student who has got a brilliant idea but not exposed to business environment you know for him okay once he gets into business understanding the language understanding the requirements of the people first of all to uh, assimilate you know the business conditions all these things in fact okay sometimes okay make him to probably i think struggle a lot uh, in carrying his particular business idea forward hence uh, most of the people in spite of having ideas in spite of having that interest even though they start a business you know uh, they, they they may not have that kind of a strength uh, or uh, they may not have okay that kind of uh, 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 you know the courage to move it okay forward when the business started fumbling uh, they may not get the required support also hence they leave it okay in between and that is the reason why in some of the newspapers you see that uh, uh, somebody a youth okay from a, a poor family in spite of having okay a very good business idea he in fact you know spent about 3 4 years of time and he took some loans from the bank he was unable to run the business and he did not get the required support and thereby you know the youth you know you find them okay hanging from the trees this kind of stories also we see that means today we will have to provide some kind of an ecosystem some kind of a support system okay to the such students governments are also thinking in those lines and hence they have come out with you know the ideas called startup ideas wherein uh, if a student has got an idea okay on the campus we will try to provide a support system we will try to provide you know the physical infrastructure we will try to provide the required mentorship using experts and we will also try to provide you know the required retainer services whatever bank loan that he requires or whatever the initial support that he requires government will support and whatever later bank loan required you know that is also provided okay right on the campus and okay whatever is is a starting idea if that idea requires you know some kind of a mentorship the ideation phase you know the he gets the support and in the very initial stage itself there are experts to tell him whether the idea probably i think would click or not and if the idea okay is a good idea then probably i think how to take it forward and how to add things to him how to probably i think okay convert that particular idea into a marketable product and how to create an mvp for that and how to probably i think guide him to see to it that you know he installs his this particular idea or product into the public domain or into the government domain for all these things to happen that entire cycle probably i think we can create it on the campus itself which is okay in the form of okay a startup cell or an entrepreneurship cell or an innovation cell which is happening across okay the country and at andhra university in fact okay last year in fact we have started a hub and in fact dr ravi eshwarapu he took over as a chief executive officer of this particular you know startup cell and uh, you know in the engineering college we have got a startup cell in the science college we have a startup cell even in the law college also we are coming out with some startup cells because there are young lawyers who are also coming out with brilliant ideas so this is the order of the day that means uh, the thinking okay on the campus okay should change the, the thinking in any educational institution should change students okay should think about okay creation of jobs uh, 
rather than getting into okay an employment because the word placement in fact okay in a way is a very very sick word because you know uh, placement that means you know the, the look at the concept of uh, a parent okay a parent is under a concept called you know uh, job job in the sense you know uh, placement uh, okay education gives placement that is the concept so that is incorrect because you know the job or placement is only for survival but education is not for survival you know education is for your overall development so we need to probably i think uh, separate these two things uh, and enable student to educate himself on the campus and get you know overall development of himself because all these days we are uh, in fact considering that uh, uh, memory itself is intelligence memory is not intelligent because somebody is just reading a textbook uh, 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 and okay maybe stacking some information in the brain you can't okay call him as an intelligent person because in the in the times to come you will have probably i think some kind of a digital chips chips which store more data which store you know more number of okay uh, bookish knowledge they can also the chip can also talk about that knowledge you know you can't call that particular chip as intelligent chip okay it is no doubt okay storing some content and just because it is storing content you can't call it as intelligent in the same way that we are looking at somebody as an intelligent for the reason that he is able to hold some information so uh, down the line uh, the intelligence means you know the, the how consciously you are able to carry out things how are you able to progress okay towards okay the next step these two things probably i think would play a major role in the age of okay what is uh, uh, today you call it as machine intelligence age where you know machines probably i think would stack up more information analyze the data and predict and give certain results the humans or the education system is expected to probably i think uh, uh, evolve okay itself uh, to cater to the future needs okay at one, uh, one hand you know government is in fact okay asking us to see to it that the uh, gross enrollment ratio goes up from the current uh, percentage of 26.5 to, uh, to 50 by 2040 that means okay we will have to probably i think upgrade our own educational systems it is not possible for us to in fact you know establish a new educational institutions because if you have to go from 26 to 40 means you will have to double the infrastructure which is not possible you will have to double the universities double the colleges which is not practically possible the only way that we can impart education is by probably i think uh, adopting a digital mode so digital platforms okay making use of digital platforms and offering online degrees this uh, should be one of the okay uh, best alternatives so i would advise you know the teachers who are currently okay looking at uh, this particular or uh, who who have registered for this particular entrepreneurship development uh, program to think on those lines also okay and give some kind of uh, case studies to your students to come out with ideas uh, how to probably i think okay enhance uh, the gross enrollment ratio by adopting okay new digital means can also be a, a problem of study to them so that you know they come out with their own models and those own models these these models you can analyze it and then okay once if you think that a particular model okay would definitely click you can support that you can think okay about getting some kind of assistance from the government because this training and teaching is going to be a big multi billion dollar industry not only in india across the world you see uh, youngsters okay who, who are you know quitting jobs from uh, plum positions in the software industry and getting into this you know uh, trainer uh, uh, kind of okay trainer uh, training business and you know such people are in fact you know are revered you know across the world i have seen okay some people who are releasing okay their okay videos in the youtube and they are able to get uh, more number of viewers and making really good money right so that means uh, sky is only the limit especially with reference to this training industry also you require a lot of youngsters to get into this business and probably i think uh, enable uh, the future citizens to learn and this is one business like that there are so many so many okay business activities as i made a mention in the very beginning that india being a developing country you look around you have so many issues you have issues with reference to water you have issues with reference to environment you have issues with reference to food you have issues with reference to okay the environment to agriculture what not you know so many problems are there you know around us and if the student community can probably i think look at these problems and understand okay uh, to address these problems by way of uh, coming out with some novel solutions because a novel solution is always important whatever solution that i can probably give may not really address uh, the current challenges i tell you my own okay experience okay or my own you know um, understanding 
what honorable chief minister of andhra pradesh exactly 20 days back he called all the vice chancellors and in the review meeting he casually made a mention that uh, i am in fact you know trying this is what in fact honorable cm said i am okay in in the go- he, he became a chief minister exactly at the two two years back and he is one person okay who is doing his level best to eradicate corruption in the state of andhra pradesh and he made a mention that in spite of okay his strict governance uh, uh, to eradicate corruption he said that still corruption is there in two departments one is town planning department and he says that somehow he is not able to uh, make the corruption to zero level in town planning department and he also said that the other okay corruption is happening at uh, uh, the registrar's office you know where you know the land registrations etc they happen and also land conversions happen then he made a mention that uh, why don't you ask your students to come out with some novel ideas because the future belongs to them and what kind of a solution is required to probably i think address such troubles rather than the current generation if you convert this particular okay issue as a problem and place this particular problem in front of the next generation students uh, making use of you know technology they always you know would come out with a novel solution and he said that you know bring out such novel solutions pass on the solutions to on cm's office so that i would okay advise somebody to go through all the solutions and validate and adopt okay this kind of a solution see see this is the view that means the issues of today cannot be solved with the ideas of yesterday we we with the teachers okay we one way we belong to okay the yesterday in the, when it comes to our ideas or you know making use of tools whereas the current generation students because they they, they belong to this generation and they cater to the needs of the future enable them okay empower them ask them to come out with some novel solutions so that the country becomes you know uh, the best possible country and uh, in its uh, transformation from developing stage to developed stage more 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 particularly when honorable prime minister is making use of a word called atmanirbhar bharat self reliant india it is the duty of okay uh, we the teachers who are imparting not only the training but also enable the students to become you know great entrepreneurs uh, and support you know the future and generation and uh, make this particular india the self reliant india thank you so much okay dr ravi because you know i went through the profile of the speakers okay that you have narrated and some of them are known to me and they are all you know wonderful people with lot of experience they have been running companies over the last 20 years making people rich and making okay uh, people proud okay with reference to uh, the services that are being offered through their companies i don't know how in fact okay you convince them to give time to deliver lecture for for about 1 1 and a half hours in various sessions and i am confident that you know with the lectures from okay these profiled people uh, all the audience about 152 people okay who are uh, registered to this particular workshop and uh, more particularly of okay, the remaining students who could hook on to youtube okay at various points of time to probably i think enrich themselves with reference to uh, specific lectures all of them okay would stand okay uh, the, to get okay the right benefit and uh, please record all these lectures so that we can also display them okay in general classrooms to uh, probably i think inspire uh, the other student community who are otherwise not able to probably i think listen to these lectures uh, for a paucity of time or maybe i think uh, the examination and academic schedule probably i think may not allow them to probably to hook on to this particular workshop we can also probably i think ask them to go through all these things thank you and i wish you all the best thank you sir thank you so much it's a honor to have you here sir uh, uh, very well said i think you made a job pretty easy uh, you you have actually highlighted thank you thank you sir yeah uh, a, a very uh, this thing uh, you probably have given us why we need this uh, edp and uh, what we should be doing as part of the edp very well said sir so talking about uh, the role of a student the role of a teacher role of a parent how they have to relook things in the new context uh you have given use cases of what the government is looking for asked uh, so you have given us also some things that we can work upon uh thank you very much sir uh, so so uh, happy to have you here and then uh, uh, of course uh, uh, thanks for your visionary thing of uh, setting up the incubation space the hub and spoke model and how we can uh, make a difference to the local community of uh, generating employment and uh, contributing to the gdp of the nation in the in the local community thank you very much sir with that uh, sir i would hand it over to uh, our uh, my own professor professor uh, uh, v krishna mohan uh, who is the ex uh, registrar and now currently the officer on special duty at andhra university um, uh, so 
Uh, sir, over to you, sir, uh, for your uh, opening uh, yeah, remarks before we start off uh, uh, getting going with this thing, uh, with, the, with the FDP. Hello. Small. Uh, Ravi. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. You are, we are audible. Yes, sir. You are. Uh, it is great that, uh, you know, at last we could uh, connect. I am in a class. So the inaugural of Vice Chancellor message is heard by all of our students in the class. <laughs> and I am so happy to join all of you in this inaugural session, five day long FDP to sensitize students uh, in the area of uh, entrepreneurship as a career. And we know today, innovation is the key for pro progress, both for an individual and an institution. Even the country, progress depends on how good you are in terms of your innovation. And uh, unless you innovate, you need to leave way for others is the order of the day. One need not become Uh, I think uh, um, Professor uh, Krishnamohan has some connectivity issues. He's joining back. Uh, just give uh, a minute, uh, and uh, with his uh, speech, we will end uh, this thing and start off. Uh, I know Praveen is already there. Uh, morning, Praveen. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, just uh, give us about five minutes before we start off with you, Praveen. Thank you. Sure, sir. Thank you. Hello. Sir, uh, sir, are you there, sir? Can you hear us? Hello. Okay. 
Hello? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Ravi, am I audible now? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Me any sound cut in? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Mute session. Ravi, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are. Go ahead, sir. Please. Hello? Hello? Yeah, please go ahead, sir. We are, we are able to hear you. Hello? Sir, are you able Can to hear I us? Continue? Yeah, please come. Please, sir. Please, we are waiting for you. No, we can hear you, sir. Okay. Sir, we can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Hmm? Sir, we can, we can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Hello? Sir, we can hear you. You please go ahead. Okay. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. Sir, we can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. Sir, I was just mentioning, just mentioning that uh, I am so I glad am so to be here on the inaugural, inaugural session. session. Just now you have heard our honorable vice chancellor explaining importance, explaining importance of entrepreneurship. Sir, uh, student somebody, level. Student sir, level. somebody in the room is also switched on and ask them to keep please uh, mute it, sir, because otherwise it's echo. It's echoing. Are you echoing, eh? Huh? Yeah, yeah, because there is more than one system out there. Uh, somebody also is all, uh, there is one more system probably in the same room uh, where uh, they have to mute it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sir. Go ahead, sir. Mirandra got a muted Jason. Yeah, all of you okay. mute the mic. It's on. Okay. okay, go ahead, sir. Okay. I was just mentioning the importance of uh, entrepreneurship. As a student, also, one needs to learn because whatever profession they are, certain qualities of entrepreneurship are very much needed for professional success. Therefore, the program, five day long FDP program, is going to benefit all the participants and entrepreneurship is the need of the hour as all of us know that entrepreneurship is a key to both economic and social progress of a nation now through the sensitization program the participants are given enough you know orientation towards a uh, choosing entrepreneurship as a career and the key to success in entrepreneurship is the innovation and today the environment is such either you innovate or perish if you fail to innovate there is no progress there is no success there is no life be it a profession be it business be it employment unless you conduct yourself innovatively even as an employee and you need to take certain amount of risk. So that way, every employee is also an entrepreneur and all those participants need not become entrepreneurs, but uh, the sensitization program is going to create awareness in turn and the word of mouth is going to spread the importance of uh, entrepreneurship in the years to come. So the organizer, Ravi Ishwarapu is a successful entrepreneur. He has created many startups, and that is one reason why today he is CEO Incubation Center. And this FDP program is not only to sensitize all of you, whoever needs his help, you can contact him, and he is going to provide mentors. There is a mentor pool, and which 
definitely is going to result in name and fame not only to you and to your family and to the alma mater institution and also to andhra university incubation center so i take the opportunity really congratulate all of you for joining with a curiosity to know what is entrepreneurship how do people can survive and grow in entrepreneurship and they take as a career and i am just reminded the words of uh, dhirubhai ambani who is a big business tycoon in indian society he was telling in a press meet see if you don't want to use your innovation somebody is going to hire in pursuit of his or her own goals so if you want to be entrepreneur if you want to pursue your own goals with your own creativity be independent and try to involve yourself is the message given by him so if you don't use your talent you know your talent is acquired by some clever businessman in pursuing such business people ambitions of life so you remain employee and they remain successful business people so that is the spirit with which all of you need to learn entrepreneurship and uh, not only understanding you feel motivated recharge yourself with all those requirements and talents that are needed to become successful in entrepreneurship career i take the opportunity wish all of you a happy learning and productive learning leading to successful entrepreneurship either at the end of your studies you need to get employed with these qualities or you need to become an entrepreneur these are the only two objectives in the new education in policy in pursuit of your ed education and uh, think that way and come up in life i wish all of you the very best of luck thank you thank you sir thank you very much uh, 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 thanks for the good words uh, with that i know uh, we are a little bit 15 minutes beyond schedule uh, i know we kept we keep uh, praveen waiting uh, up there wali uh, i know now the team uh, uh, i will also take this opportunity to introduce uh, five of my team members were students of mba program walli chandana uh, navin hemant and harish who are the guys who will be helping uh, me uh, they work with me i wouldn't say the the concept here just what i learned from the uh, from the corporate as well as out here working with you not under you nobody reports to you you work with the team and you are what your team is so uh, with that i hand it over to my team uh, i would also be one of the speakers so it is for them to take and hand over and handle the next five day sessions today being handled by handled by wali yes all over to you wali and then uh, please uh, take over wali all yours from here thank you thanks everybody for the part of the inaugural session thank you sir thank you sir good morning everybody i am wali and i welcome you all for the first session of video I request you all to keep your mics on mute till the end of the presentation by the speaker. All your questions will be taken by the speaker in the last 20 minutes of every session. You can either post your questions in the chat box or ask the speaker directly during the time allotted for questions. If you have any technical problem during the session, please post it in the chat box or contact the coordinators mentioned in the email sent to you. For the first the first session is on startups, innovation, entrepreneurship and the ecosystem. The speaker for the session is Mr. Praveen Dorna. Mr. Praveen Dorna is the co-founder of Socha Hub, a SaaS community management platform for brands to build their private social networks. He holds an MBA degree in entrepreneurship from Babson College, USA, which is ranked number one in entrepreneurship globally. He was previously involved in startup wins at corporates, where he built an innovation management program for a six billion dollar US company. He has over twelve years of combined work experience. working with startups franchises mnc's and non profit organizations across payments travel education robotics media erp technologies in tech and managerial roles in us and india he is a consultant for startups and incubators and is a visiting professor on lean startups at symbiosis institute of business management pune flame university and mahindra university in addition to serving on boards of non profits it's a pleasure to have you here sir and we thank you for being a part of this evening i request you to start the sessions
Yeah, thanks, Srivali. And uh, you guys can hear me, Srivali? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Audible. Thank you. Yeah, uh, good morning, everyone. And I would like to thank the whole team at Andhra University for putting this together and inviting me. Uh, it's, it's no easy feat to conduct an ADP program. So, firstly, a big congratulations on that. And uh, I, I'm really excited to see so many people out here in the EDP program, like all the faculties across India, right? You're actually, uh, it, it's very inspiring to see the academia uh, starting to work towards, you know, building businesses and shaping out the future of India. So it's, it's uh, pretty exciting and uh, I really look forward. And uh, I think I'm privileged to start off and I uh, would love to initially give you a very quick glance into the world of startups. Uh, you know, my understanding is all of you might be very new to startups. So I did put a lot of material, but I would love to keep it interactive, right? I would share my screen. I would put the PPT out, but I would love to make it more like a conversation where we are trying to understand the startup ecosystem rather than, you know, me just trying to run through some slides and, you know, finish the presentation and also please uh, put your questions on the chat. I'll constantly be checking the chat over here and any questions that you have or anything that you want me to talk in more deeper, I would love to do that. So yeah, with that, I would love to start off and uh, I'm sharing my screen and we'll just get started in the journey of startups. I've gone through all the five days agenda and it's actually a very beautiful agenda. So they're touching upon most of the pieces that you need to know about startups. So I'm actually going to focus more on the high level big picture of why startups, why are we even sitting here and, you know, listening to this session and why is the government pushing for it? Why is the whole world running behind startups, right? So that's what I'm going to focus on. And then like, you know, Divya and you know, other speakers would, you know, uh, take you one level deeper and help you understand how each part of the startup ecosystem works, right? So yeah, with that, I'll just get started. Please give me a minute. Okay, uh, hope you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, I think uh, you'll be see seeing a lot of cool words here, but I think I'll demystify everything for you. I'll simplify everything for you. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's nothing new. It's just something that all of you know. It's just more about connecting the dots and you know, help you just reconnect and obviously tell you some things which probably you might not have experienced before. So yeah, today, I the first session, right, I would focus on very much in terms of understanding this whole landscape, right? Whenever we say the word startup, what that actually means, what innovation actually means, right? What entrepreneurship is about in India, across the world, and uh, why are startups getting so popular, right? Uh, they have been big businesses, big, big companies, you know, in the last 30, 50 years, but off late, you see there's a madness going about startups, right? Everyone wants to build a startup. So what exactly the startup, why is it different, right? All of us use the, use the word innovation, right? As rightly said by Registrar Sir and all, uh, but let's understand what they are in a much more deeper way. So that's what I would focus on. And you know, uh, Divya would probably take it from there in terms of uh, the next steps on that, right? Uh, so I'll give you a quick uh, introduction, right? I'll, I'll probably just quickly tell you my story, uh, you know, because probably the bio, I'm not sure if that made sense to you or not, but, I've been somebody right from my college days. I've been very interested in startups and this is like 10, 15 years, right? So I studied in, uh, you know, Usman University undergrad and then I went and worked with companies. I ran franchises. I worked in, uh, you know, big companies. So pretty much in my last 12 years, I had a chance to work across the spectrum. So everything from the smallest of companies, including nonprofits, franchises to small size companies, mid size companies, MNCs. Right. So I've done, I've uh, kind of got exposed to a breadth of things because I always wanted to build companies and run companies. That has always been something that always interested me right from college days. So I've been doing that. And in the process, yes, I did my MBA as well uh, from Babson, which is uh, ranked number one for entrepreneurship. And uh, I learned a lot. And even in the US, I was working a lot on innovation consulting. So I was building innovation programs for uh, billion dollar companies. Right, uh, I was trying to see how you know uh, startups can be built within bigger companies, and also was active part of the startup space abroad. 
So that also gave me a very good handle in terms of how innovation works, how startups work and all. Uh, with all that, uh, I moved back to India around five, six years ago from the US and uh, I have been uh, working on my own startup, but parallelly, uh, because I've worked in innovation and you know consulting and education space, so I really like teaching on a personal front. So even I'm a teacher, uh, probably, you know, I, I teach part-time. Uh, all of you are probably much more deeper. Uh, so I teach on startups. I teach on lean startups and how startups can be built quickly and how they can be treated quickly. And also I teach at uh, Mahindra University, Flame University, Symbiosis Pune. So I teach all these MBA folks on how, how to build startups. And uh, like the registrar sir rightly mentioned, uh, startup is more like a mindset, right? You can use even that startup mindset, even in smaller companies, bigger companies. Doesn't need to be that you have to be the owner of the company. I think that's the a very beautiful statement that's made that a lot of people don't understand. Uh, having the startup mentality is just more like I'll go do something and get stuff done, right? So that is the kind of mentality. So yeah, as of today, I run a startup, a tech startup myself, and uh, I also consult uh, some funded uh, companies, and I you know I even uh, you know help startups and incubators. Uh, now and then in terms of you know putting this stuff together so that's quickly a, a brief about me i'm more than happy to connect post but uh you know this hope this helps you understand the reason why i'm telling you this context is everything that i'm going to talk is based on all these experiences that i've gone through in the last you know 10 to 15 years across the us india you know and uh, have been build, building networks right i uh, just prior to this company i even ran a social network for startup spaces in India, right? Like a LinkedIn, Facebook for startups. So yeah, that's pretty much about me. Now, you know, first and foremost, uh, welcome to the world of startups, right? Uh, you'll be hearing all these cool words moving forward. A lot of these buzzwords, I would say rather, right? Uh, so pretty much, you know, just putting a word cloud out here, which will, you know, you, these are the common terms that you keep hearing over and over and over and that you'll also hear in the next five days of your uh, journey you know, with this EDP program. So let's get started with uh, diving into this. So yeah, let's uh, start checking this out, right? Uh, so if you see 2009 and 2019, right? Uh, if you look at 90s and early 2000s and all, there used to be companies, right? Which were big and they used to stay and they used to have dominance like if you take GE for example right uh, General Electric is something that all of you know right they have been in the business for over 100 years and you know they control the market they're like super huge same with a lot of big 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 companies right but now when you start seeing what's happening right in the last 10 years or so everything is actually changing right uh, right from the way companies are coming the way companies are getting shut down a lot of stuff is actually happening uh, on each of them, right? Uh, so what I want all of you to understand is very much like the whole landscape is becoming more and more dynamic, right? Because a company that is like 10 years ago is not existing today. A company that was not even, you know, started 10 years ago is now like one of the biggest companies, right? So there's a huge shift because previously companies used to take 30 years, 50 years, 100 years to you know, become like the biggest ones, right? But if you look at like a lot of these companies in this list, they are like 10 years, 20 years, right? That's it. They are getting there. And in the future, now we are even seeing companies in five years, eight years, becoming one of the biggest ones in the verticals, right? So this is the beauty of what's happening, where previously innovation was more like a luxury, but now innovation is not a luxury, it's a necessity. Everyone has to innovate, even the existing companies, even the biggest of companies, they don't have any other option other than to start innovating, right? So this is like one of the examples that I wanted to show, right? So let's start back, right? Let's, if you look at the India story, uh, so how do you think the whole uh, startup landscape and why, why did Bangalore became uh, like, you know, the hub for uh, startups to start with? I think let's try to understand, right? Because if you understand how one city how one place actually is building or has built a startup ecosystem. I think a lot of these things can be implemented even at your colleges, even in your local cities in terms of building a whole ecosystem, right? So we'll, we'll get to that, but, uh, you know, we'd love to hear your thoughts. I think you can put it on chat and uh, just one second. Yeah, uh, I would love to hear it on chat in terms of, uh, 
you know what do you think was the triggering point for bangalore uh, startup spaces right all of you know that company what's that company would love to see that in the chat yeah i mean let's keep it interactive right i don't want to go on talking and talking and talking and right i'll get a little boring so what is that popular company in india you know which actually triggered a lot around building companies and bangalore becoming a whole it destination any guesses okay yeah so who was from chennai yes uh, ramesh sir yeah i think that's a good try yeah yeah so these are the new ones right infosys yeah 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 right uh, so yeah i think that's a, that's the right answer right what happened was if you look at i think all of you are like you know pretty much well versed with most of the happenings in the last 20 30 years right so what happened was uh, narayan murthy and infosys they actually uh, started uh, you know this whole it business is out in bangalore right there were a lot of other ones coming up as well but these were one of the ones which actually brought that whole global outsourcing to india getting software projects building it out in india so that is where uh, what you see bangalore is like one of the most advanced startup ecosystem as of today in india that's primarily because its roots have been built like 30 years ago right most of the other cities and all what's happening is they have just started you know 5 years ago 10 years ago a lot of them are just starting off right the government has started just pushing 5 10 years ago but the reason why bangalore and all has produced most number of startups or like most number of tech startups is because of this whole world called ecosystem right so what is this ecosystem is what we are going to understand and how do you build this ecosystems inside your colleges inside your cities right so that is what we will actually try to understand so now what happened was infosys actually started you know growing and growing and growing and as a part of it lot of them got exposure to the technology pieces how to build tech companies and all right so that way in due course of time by 2000 or so lot of people actually knew technology and uh, seeing the same vision like you know even hyderabad few other cities as well started picking up right the technology pieces around it so what happened with this is whenever a lot of them actually work in these companies they themselves want to also start companies right that's something natural to all of us now if i work with some company and i really like what they do and i feel that i can go start my own business you know i would go and start my own business so this is what happened so a lot of them who worked in infosys and a lot of good it companies that came up they all came out and said hey i can start my own company i can go build my own company right so that is how people started coming out and more and more startups started coming in right uh, yeah so the whole catalyst uh, i think abhimanyu has a great question what was the catalyst behind it growing up into one big ecosystem right uh, any ecosystem is uh, so ecosystem is just a old word package into new things right uh, like you know if you take this college ecosystem now all of us are coming together in the cdp program and actually learning from each other so this is a micro ecosystem now what all are part of the ecosystem there will be corporates colleges mentors investors right so for a ecosystem to really work the whole community has to come together it's not like one of them can go pull off it's like all of them coming together collaborating with each other like you know how i'm coming in some other speakers are coming in now you know we are you know giving something back and uh, you know all of you will go and give back to a lot of students so that way you know a lot of these things can happen right uh, yeah sudeep sir uh, do you want to share something yeah uh, so uh, anybody uh, wants to share anything you please put it in the chat i would just bring it up or if needed you know we'll have a conversation so right sir i am so, not able to see your slides sir oh yeah yeah uh, i i am just putting the chat because i am seeing the questions got it got it i am just moving into that so uh, the thing with bangalore is uh, you know let's see that story so now a lot of these startups came in right and in 2000s onwards what happened is lot of them started building uh, tech companies right and uh, there was one very important technological change in 2000 to 2010 that really helped build a lot of startups can any of you guess what was that at least uh, people who are from computer science and all right because previously if you remember uh, you know building any company needed us to buy the server put everything together so there was a huge investment even to try an idea right you know then something happened 
after which trying ideas has become very easy. Can can anybody take a guess at it? Cloud. Yes, absolutely. Right, cloud, cloud technologies, Amazon, and all. So yeah, that's the beauty of this. Right now, suddenly one beautiful innovation came in. Right till then, the whole concept was. Let's take a lot of time to build companies, you know, put in a lot of money, and that's when something will work. And also, it used to be more like you know standard service companies, right? Like if you need something in Hyderabad or Delhi, you need to go to those places. They can't offer you somewhere else. So this was the system, and it was not. It was very decentralized. But suddenly, what happened is with cloud technologies coming in. Cloud is nothing for like you know those who might not be super tech savvy here. Cloud is nothing but you know Amazon company. All of you know Amazon. they came up with a storage where they said you know you can do everything online you don't even have to put anything locally in your physical spaces right we will give you the server space will you know you can put your website over there you can put all your software over there and you know run it right or you can store everything right over there online and it's like subscription like if you want to start a company today you can just launch it tomorrow morning right so this is how a lot of technology startups started coming where they said you know let's build companies on cloud and this whole cloud computing is a reason why you saw facebooks you know all these big companies like you know all the twitters of the world facebooks of the world right all these instagrams of the world all of them started coming in because of the cloud technologies you know so that's like one big innovation that really moved everything right and before that in 90s internet was like the big thing from there you know online commerce right if you look at e-commerce companies a lot of you might have seen how into uh, there was a dot com bubble and burst right so that is where the whole era was more around paying online seeing online before that internet came in so if you start looking at it right there are actually trends if you start observing what are the trends innovation will come from these trends of how people are behaving how things are shaping up right so what i really want you to understand is to start looking at trends at a much broader level like you know what is happening around us what will be next 5 years what will be next 10 years when you start knowing this right lot of these ecosystem players including all of us in this room we have to start looking at what is the future and when you start looking at the future we are investing from now on for a great future right that is why we are building companies we are doing a lot of innovative stuff trying to build companies right so the story goes like in 90s internet started becoming you know everyone's thing in uh, early 2000s you know online payments right e-commerce all of us could go online and buy especially in the us markets in indian markets it started with flipkart and all right or you know few other companies uh, in fibeam and all in 2005 onwards right so now all of us just go online and buy without any stress you know that's the level of penetration that a lot of these things have happened so the beauty is uh, with a lot of these companies coming in previously everything had to be built in house now you don't even need to build anything in house like for example let's say i want to launch a, a social network for andhra university right or a social network for all the participants in this room tomorrow morning i can just take a software and use it i don't even need to code let's say i want to use a payment gateway you can just within one week apply for a payment gateway with razor pay or stripe or any other online vendor and you can get your own payment gateway otherwise it used to be like a six month one year effort to just build a payment gateway like let's say you want to have chat on your website right let's say a chat bot on your college website now it is like you know within a day you can get a chat bot on your college website so that is the beauty of how technology is building up and technology is integrating so all of you even if you like it or not technology is going to be a super integral part of everyone's life and i think all of you already realize that right so there is a beauty of what's shaping up and what's going on so let's start understanding each of these things so i'll just start off with two student startups right uh, very small start, simple examples around innovation and all I'll be mindful of the time. I'll uh, close by eleven, and you know, we can have interactive Q and A from there, right? Uh, so let's talk about innovation, right? A lot of us think uh, uh, there is some noise. Uh, request uh, some of you to please mute. Very much. Yeah. So yeah. So pretty much. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Please uh, request you to move, mute. Uh, there's some online noise for me. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about innovations, right? All of us think uh, okay. yeah. you know, yeah. you know, it always looks like a big term, right? It is not something like you know, it is not something that. Uh, can you please mute uh, Tech Prahas?
Yeah, cool. Uh, thank you. So uh, pretty much uh, the first thing is, you know, uh, innovation happens at like, you know, two levels, right? In a lot of times, whenever we talk about innovation, all of us think that it's a big thing. It's something that, you know, it takes a lot of research. It takes a lot of time, energy, right? It's not like that. Actually, whenever we are building companies, a lot of innovation comes up from the smallest things that all of you see, right? If all of us are sitting for the next three hours, six hours, all of you can actually come up with a lot of wonderful ideas. And in fact, like, you know, it is very much possible that all of you can innovate. So people have really complicated the word innovation, but I'll give you very small examples of innovation and, you know, you can understand. And all these examples I'm sharing are purely by college students. I'm not even talking about some, you know, super experienced professionals and all, right? So all of you know this pen drive, right? Now, let's say I want to wear the pen drive on my hand, right? Because let's say you're always losing your pen drive. So what happened is, you know, if you start putting these two things together, now you see this company, right? This is like one of the companies that came out in the US, right? Uh, which is called MOH Band, uh, Memory on Hand. So th these were like college students who were losing their pen drives all the time. And they said, hey, there should be a better way, right? So they said, uh, you know, why can't I wear my pen drive on my hand? So they took this and they made it into one single thing where, you know, this can be done. But obviously, you know, people want colors, people want their logos. Now, let's say I print each of your college logo on the pen drive and give it to you. It is such a cool thing for you, right? So this way, what happened is uh, they started actually putting all these things together. And in one year, they sold more than 4 lakh units of just this thing, right? This is something that any of you can come up with. It's not even like rocket science, super difficult. All of you can just, you know, pick this up and you can make this. And they literally sold 400,000 400, units in just one year. So it became so viral because everyone uses a pen drive and everyone wanted to, you know, have it like a nice band in the student space, right? So this is what innovation can be. You don't have to really build big, big innovations. And even your students, right, if they're actually solving problems around you with the smallest of innovations, they can be commercialized. It doesn't have to be the next big company, but it has to solve problems where people are actually, uh, you know, getting value out of this, right? So same is the case, right? Now, actually, off late, you see there's just a water bottle. Now I'm, atto I'm attaching IoT, right? Internet of things. So I'm using internet to connect the water bottle. I'm putting a sensor out here and all, and I can literally track how much water is there in this, right? What is the temperature? What is the level of water? right giving me reminders saying that i should drink i should refill right now this makes your life so easier right so selling bottles is anybody's job now i'm innovating on the i am it is a smart bottle right it is much smarter because it you know it's glowing to remind you it tracks the level of water it says that hey praveen the water is uh, you know empty you need to go fill it up right or it will give you all these things so this is where innovation happens in the smallest of things around you you don't even have to actually complicate a lot of these things right and uh, you know talking about these things as well right drones is something that all of you might be seeing right so this is what i'm talking about the trends right because all of you know what is going to happen in the future uh, it's just that you know all these are so big that you can't avoid it we are going to see them again and again and again even if you read newspapers or not, even if you look at news or not, doesn't matter. You're going to constantly get bombarded by these trends, right? And one such trend is, uh, you know, drones, right? Um, so till like 2015, 16, drones were illegal. But now suddenly drones have become legal and you see drones being used everywhere, right? Including the photo shoots in weddings, to surveillance, right? To farming, to delivery, right? So many use cases are coming in where people are actually moving away from inefficient systems to efficient systems, right? That's what startups always do. They try to solve a problem in a better way, right? So when you start looking at it, now I'm just taking a drone and applying to a farm, right? Here, what all can be done if I'm applying a drone to a farm? Yeah, let's have a quick conversation because, yeah. Let's have a quick, con uh, yeah. Uh, Tekra has raised hand. No, no, no. We can spray the uh, uh, pesticides or Absolutely. even the seeds also in the beginning. Absolutely. Yes, that's a great start. What else? What else? Come on. I think all of you should start 
putting your thinking caps on let's do some yeah ideas. emergency services like traffic or ambulance systems can be also really helping out absolutely doctor sir for your, yeah yeah weight area networks something in manner so absolutely right now see this can be used in like you said farm spraying farm monitoring even probably planting seeds why should a farmer go and plant seeds everywhere probably a drone can just drop seeds all across right it can probably measure the temperature it can check for pests it can check for any spoiled crops right see the the usage is humongous now i just take the same drones right and this just the another student startup right this was in 2015 16 again uh, it's an andhra based startup right uh, from my zack or vijayawada so i met him like you know four or five years ago and it was beautiful just a third year student uh, just when drones were getting started he got the permissions he started building it then you know he went to even the us boston and all and presented it so a lot of people are doing a lot of things now let's take the small thing and now apply it to food right yeah mapping the crop field uh, tech prahas is raising a hand over and over so i don't know what's happening there yeah so yeah uh, so pretty much uh, you know now take the same drone and let's put it for food delivery the nothing is changing right you are just taking the same no, 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 no. uh yeah i think i don't know who this tech prahas is okay. I request you to please mute or request the moderator to just please check once with them. Yeah. So uh, not you know taking the same drone and putting it to food is giving a whole different level of uh, usage, right? Now imagine in the future you don't have delivery boys coming to your house, right? Anybody doing any delivery? Now imagine all of you just sitting in your home, college is not. You get food delivered. Your package is delivered. Um, yeah so, so sorry guys so uh, it's actually disturbing um uh, so yeah sorry i come home jata hu uh, uh moderator can you please uh, sir we are checking please uh, are you going to just take them out probably they are not in the session or maybe something is missing out okay sir yeah, yeah. totally good so uh, now what's happening is now imagine the same drone is being used for different different purposes in the future as you see right now there used to be a typewriter now typewriters are not existing much you know drivers are there in the future driverless cars are going to replace the drivers and pretty much this is how the things are going to shape up as you go and go and go right so a lot of people systems that are inefficient everything that we do manually are going to get eliminated right and everything is going to actually be taken over by robots taken over by drones taken over by machines and uh, skills will be much much higher like that's why you're seeing artificial intelligence machine learning a lot of new things coming out right now. so that is what is actually the future of uh, things right uh, so like you know one of uh, the sir mentioned uh, right uh, in the future drone pilots would be required absolutely right see uh, you know all of you really understand the spaces understand like you know the future of innovation now what we are focusing on is how do you bring out this innovation from the students right or maybe some of you in the future might build your own right uh, uh, actually you can uh, remove the person so really i think you can remove uh, uh, tech prahas uh, yes and i think yeah and i think let him rejoin probably i'm not sure if he is realizing or not it's making me Okay, yeah. So that way, uh, you know, the same apply to healthcare. Now, imagine emergencies, right? Let's say you suddenly have an emergency health issue, and let's say it's full of traffic. A drone comes and gives you the medication, or you know, somebody comes and gives you quickly, or somebody monitors you. Now, let's say you're not at your home, and you want your older parents to be monitored. You know, a, a robot can probably monitor and help you. So the future is actually going to be a huge amount of innovation. what you are seeing is just like super super basic the future is going to be very very exciting as well as scary because innovation is great but at the same time innovation comes with its pros and cons right so a lot of you might be thinking like how do i find trends right uh, i i believe all of you have questions so you know google is your best friend i'll i'll just show you some very interesting things just as you know basic things for you to just get a hang of uh, there are sites like something called trend hunter i'll just show you this i hope you can see my screen on this 
So Trend Hunter is like a site that talks about all the upcoming trends, right? A lot of you might be thinking, where do I get a lot of these ideas? What's happening? What are the new companies coming up? New innovations coming up? You can just go and check it out. There are like so many ideas in, and so many new companies, new products, everything across every space, right? You want to see what's happening in fashion, what's happening in technology, what's happening in lifestyle, right? So like, you know, let's take a few examples if you just want to see right uh, smartphone connected telescopes right we just spoke about smartphone connected water bottles right it's like new kind of cameras right for phones right car instrument alarm clocks like different different things they have like very very new new uh, innovations you can go check it out you can uh, bookmark the site or you can take the site trend hunter or you can even just search for google trends right it'll tell you what all is being searched right uh, on internet so this way you can get to know a lot of new innovations or new companies that are coming out, right? So I'll leave it over there. But I hope all of you are now getting a hang of like what trends are and you know what's happening over there, right? So any questions till now or shall we move forward? I mean, my goal is to just give you a glimpse and make you super excited about the future. You know, rest all, I think the other uh, you know, uh, speakers would actually cover. I don't want to take away everything that they would share. Right? Uh, is it safe to say an innovation creates further innovation? Absolutely, right? Uh, absolutely, right, Abhimanyu. So, a lot of times innovation comes up with either need or technological research because now let's say all of us are you know struggling with something, then you know somebody wants to innovate either it through the research labs or it could be a a person, right? A lot of you see so many grassroots innovators coming up right around you who have no formal education they're coming up with very, very beautiful ideas because they have a problem. They're struggling with that problem every day and they want to solve it. And that way, one thing will like, you know, like I said, internet, with internet, you could see stuff online and buy stuff online. Then came payments online, right? That is where PayPal and all these companies came in Amazon and all. Now all of them came in and then they said, hey, now we want to do something more. I just don't want to pay. I want to talk to my friends online. I want to see their updates. Then Facebook and all of them came. Now with all of them coming in, then again, a whole new bunch of companies came saying that I just don't want to be socially connected. I want to do a lot more. I want to get on a video conference. That is where you're seeing Hangouts, Zooms, right? So many things coming in. Now we are saying that, hey, I just want to sit at home. I want to learn everything online. I want to get everything delivered at home. I don't want to travel, right? Anything that is not efficient in your day-to-day -day life, innovation is going to solve that problem. So all of you are catalysts in a way in each of your colleges, in each of your geographies to really move innovation, right? So that is the theme of what I'm actually talking about. Okay, uh, any questions you have, please put it over there. I will now move on to the next part of, uh, you know, this part. So my first part of this thing was more to tell you about what's happening around innovation and why innovation and, you know, why are we even excited about startups and what's the story around it, right? So all of you know Zomato, right? I've just taken some examples that are like very common. All of you might use it or at least have heard of it for sure. Right, Zomato and Swiggy and all are the two companies that have become a household name, right? But when you look at Zomato, it started in 2008. If you look at Swiggy, it just started in 2014. But now when you look at it, both of them are like billion dollar companies, right? They are called unicorns. Any company that is above $1 billion or you know 8,000 crores is uh, called a unicorn valuation, right? So now there is like too many unicorns coming up now. And if you look at all these, the beauty is all these companies have just started like 10 years ago, right? But if you look at right now, they are like, you know, 10 billion, 15 billion dollars and all. Can you ever imagine a regular service company doing this? It's not possible, right? Even if you take the likes of Hilton and all, they actually took 30 years, 50 years to even get to, you know, unicorn status. Now, if you look at the companies of late, it's five years, eight years, 10 years max. This is how you're seeing companies being produced, right? So I'll tell you again why, right? The reason again over here is purely technology, right? Because if you take a Swiggy or a Zomato, they can really grow and grow and grow like there is no end. Because a Swiggy, I can launch in Delhi, I can launch in some other country in no time because I have the technology readily available. All I need to do is put more servers on the cloud, right? And say, and start putting advertisements over there or start selling over there and people will start ordering, right? Of course, there's an offline piece to it, right? But if you look at it, the rate at which they're scaling, the rate at which money is being pumped in, 
is like a whole different level altogether that is the reason why you see these companies are coming and the zomatos and swiggies are literally taking control over restaurants right restaurants have ruled the spaces now restaurants are like marginalized people you know the restaurants are depending on swiggies and zomatos now right and if you look at it see the speed at which they are doing they started their seed round which is like the basic round and then they went on taking more and more and more money all these will be covered in the next upcoming sessions for you in terms of the types of investments and states of investments but like you know if you saw zomato recently they even went ipo right uh, initial public offering so they got into the stock market and now you can go buy a zomato share and a lot of people made a lot of money including if you look at freshworks went and launched in the us and you know now more than 500 employees are like you know crorepatis in that company because they worked with those companies so that is the beauty of a lot of these startups which are like in very short time becoming very big and that is the future so even if all of you like it or don't like it it's more about tech companies are going to take over so understanding technology understanding applications of technology understanding how to solve problems using technology in every industry right you can take agriculture you can take healthcare we name it in every industry technology will be there and it will get deeper and deeper now it's more about instead of running away from it we have to embrace it and start trying to see how do we build these companies right and by the way one disclaimer that i want to share with all of you is everyone doesn't have to build this companies right a lot of times there could be farmers and they're struggling with a small problem and there's a solution for it and we can solve it it's okay even if it becomes a 1 crore company 2 crore company 10 crore company that's fine everyone doesn't have to go build a unicorn but obviously like you know people want to go big but at the end of the day i think we should equally respect the people who are solving problems locally and solving the smallest of things to people who are going and building scalable companies everything has its own place in this ecosystem right so that is the story around it so if you look at just this year right already 41 unicorns have come this is like the highest across the globe right uh, last year there were just around like some 10 15 uh, unicorns that came in 2020 this year 41 companies have become billion dollar companies and by end of year it might be 50 so even china is only producing uh, 20 25 unicorns this year india is now like you know already 41st unicorn just like you know 29th november uh, so this is the beauty of what innovation and building a ecosystem does right because even in the last 5 to 7 years we are seeing more and more things happen right because i'll tell you what's happening right if you look at this whole graph right you can go check out these links i'm happy to share the slides uh, after the session and uh, you can always check it out see the number of unicorns that have come right this is where like india started hardly one unicorn then few more then few more few more and now when you look at it it's like a whole thing and as you go and go it just get bigger and bigger and bigger so why is building companies important to us right all of you might be having this question right you might be asking this question saying that praveen all this is very good right but we have like a lot of middle class a lot of lower middle class you know and the bottom of the pyramid so a lot of the startups and innovations are going to actually impact or change the way things are because if you go back and look right uh, you know let's go back to the slide the first slide that i spoke about do you see any indian companies out here no right there are no indian companies not even your reliances or jios and all that stuff right uh, so we are just starting to get there and even everything that you use around you right even your laptops your phones everything is either from china or from the us right japan right so a lot of these global guys are the guys who are innovating all of them are actually the guys who are actually very very advanced in terms of where they are compared to us and that is why it's very important for us to build a very powerful ecosystem that can really you know do a lot of wonderful things right so that is why i'll tell you what's going on as well right so now we are looking at the startup race right uh, so if you look at india right why should india innovate or why should india build so many incubators or why is there so much push from the government saying that uh, you know let's build startups or all of you have a mandate to help startups and build startups right so this is where if you look at it us china and all are like the biggest investors into indian companies so if you look at the paytm you look at flipkart even those are like heavily funded by global ones right 
but that's okay right initially somebody has to put in the money somebody has to trust our startups and put in the money but as you go india is moving from businesses to startups yes so uh, startups you know yes absolutely right uh, so businesses will also innovate right there will be startups even within businesses so that's a very good point abhimanyu has brought in the chat right a uh, lot of these startups are also built to be bought out right how flipkart was built and walmart came in and bought it right similarly a lot of these smaller companies will also get acquired and even that is part of ecosystem because uh, like let's say india wants to really digitize some things and they have like smaller companies which are already done the innovation they can just go buy that company instead of that big company sitting for another two years researching getting patents and launching everything they might say hey i'll go buy this company i'll get this technology and i'll just instantly launch it in three months right so that is why building startups is important and also selling startups investing into startups all this is part of the ecosystem right and all of you as aics are in the first stage of that step where we are actually thinking about hey you know if somebody has ideas somebody is just starting off with their companies how do we help them how do we make sure because that is the most challenging time for somebody because everything is unclear right nobody knows what the problem how the solution is and there are like lot of things right so why right now the startup race is going on because if you look at all these big companies right you see you know, most of them you know are indian founders but invested by global guys right so but the problem is most of the indian guys don't have that kind of capital like what are what these guys have right because in india there is still no culture of startups being successful it's just in the last 3 5 years you're seeing a lot of these founders making exist right like how flipkart founder made an exit and uh, flipkart actually uh, you know the founders got like uh, almost 1000 crores each right so almost like a billion dollars sorry uh, 8000 crores each right uh, so they have plenty of money now they are reinvesting into companies they are they are kind of you know trying to grow more startups out of india because that way what happens is it's like this right if i go to a college i graduate out of the college like you know even if you take uh, you know ravi sir from andhra university is going back to the college and uh, you know they helping them set up an incubator it's a part of giving back and building a ecosystem in andhra university similarly a lot of these founders also after being successful they are coming back and supporting more startups like if you look at just flipkart flipkart employees have come out and started in the last 10 years i think there are more than 500 to 1000 startups just with flipkart employees who came out and launched their own startup companies right because they are learning how startups have to be built and if you look at flipkart right flipkart founders are amazon employees previously they used to work in amazon and they learned how amazon works they came and launched that in india right so this is how learning happens through cycles right so if you look at india right we are still like very basic we just are like only 45% penetration in digital right indian population is like 1.3 billion people right or almost 1.4 billion this year and if you look at the penetration right only 35% india lives in urban and 65% still lives in rural areas right and you know in rural areas still there is so much innovation that's needed to improve the quality of life and not only that the beauty is even internet right it's only 45% penetration that means in india only 45% or 600 million people as of today have access to internet even if it's basic on phone or a geo phone or like you know a 2g 3g plan right so that is the stage at which if you take a us right internet penetration is around 80 90% everyone has access to internet they are like you know way way ahead on a lot of these parts that's why we are still using those companies but innovation once it starts in india you start seeing that everything is changing right uh, all of you use upi right upi payments it's a india innovation now the whole world is taking upi innovation and trying to implement in their countries right that is the beauty of it mobile payments that's again like you know innovation from here in africa so a lot of these innovations in the future will be adopted by us instead of us adopting india right india adopting us it will be the other way around as well So a lot of these things are coming up. I'll tell you what happened, right? Similarly, like how Bangalore happened. If you go look at some of these reports, there are a lot of wonderful reports. Uh, I'm happy to share, or it's all there on Startup India site as well. You can check it out, right? I'm just uh, trying to pick some good things for you to in the context of the story, all right? So if you look at this, right, this just like five years ago. Now it's like lot lot higher, but also US has grown. Now see how many startups US is there, right? 
So all of you know Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley, right? All of us really obsess about Silicon Valley. Uh, so essentially, that's because over there the semiconductor industry was the reason, right? Just like how here Infosys and IT industry became the enabler. Over there, semiconductor industry was the enabler where the Intels of the world, right? Uh, AMD's of the world, all these guys actually came in. They made a lot of money and they started supporting newer innovations, newer companies. Then Stanford University came in. So if you look at it, right, companies and education, these are two pieces that really will bring innovation out. So a lot of these companies have business requirements, innovation requirements, and a lot of colleges have that uh, knowledge capacity or like, you know, that capacity to produce innovations, to do a lot of research, to do a lot of things. That's how if you look at MIT, Harvard, Stanford and all, they have become like the hubs of innovation for the global things because the, in the US markets and the global markets, a lot of these companies really drive innovation working with the colleges. So that collaboration is very much needed. I hope this helps you starting to understand why a lot of these countries are much more advanced or where they are because Silicon Valley is like almost a 50 to 80 year old trend. Just like how Infosys and Bangalore is like 30 year old trend, right? If you take Hyderabad, it is like probably a 20 year old trend. Right. So all these things are like seeds that all of you have to plant that will in due course of time get bigger and bigger and bigger. And obviously you should be supported by the whole ecosystem. I'll talk about that in the last 10, 15 minutes. Right. So that way, you know, we have like a lot of these companies coming up, a lot of these uh, things shaping up. So uh, going back, the reason why I'm telling you all this is uh, all these are pieces that will influence this stuff. A lot of you might be just thinking that, hey, government is kind of telling me to start an AIC, you know, help some startups and, you know, get things moving. But I'm telling you the whole backstory, right? Uh, for innovation to take place, there needs to be entrepreneurial mindset. Oh, yeah, Abhiman, I think that's a great question. How do you build entrepreneurial mindset in India, right? Uh, we'll just talk about that. I'll definitely answer that question. It's a wonderful question. Uh, because I've worked in the innovation space, I'll share some thoughts about how you can, you know, spark innovation in the smallest of things, right? So coming to this, uh, now this is the story I'm talking about, right? All these successful startups, like Kunal Shah has made an exit. He's like the founder of Cred, right? You're seeing the Cred ads. He's the founder previously of, uh, you know, uh, another uh, payment one, right? I, I keep forgetting the name. Uh, so pretty much this way, you know, Bansal's, Bini Bansal is Flipkart. Right. Uh, so all these founders are actually Paytm founder. Now see how many investments have they made in the last three, four years. Right. There are like plenty of now founders coming and saying, hey, we will invest into startups. Right. And uh, like literally in one year, he invested 2200. OK. I'm not even talking about uh, throughout his life. Uh, these numbers are just in the last one year for your information. Right. So just in the last one year, Kunal Shah has invested in 200 startups himself. Right. So this is where founders become successful and then they invest into other startups and again, other startups grow, they become successful. So this is what drives the ecosystem, right? Now, each of your cities, a lot of these founders coming in today, five years down the line, 10 years more down the line might be successful. They might actually have a lot of money to reinvest into your system, mentor a lot of students, mentor a lot of startups in your space. This is how it's very important to build a whole uh, ecosystem around, right? So anyways, in the interest of time, uh, you know, I think all this would be covered by Vivya. I'm just telling you that ideas to startups is like a long journey. Uh, you know, it takes around one to three years usually because, you know, a lot of times a lot of us think that, you know, I have to build my company and all. It's not like that. Either company can be run by you or company can be even built through research, right? Like let's say somebody is not a founder, but they're very good at research. They're coming up with a very innovative thing and patenting. Again, patenting is a session for tomorrow. That way, you know, commercialization can happen at any point of time. It's not like I have to build a company. Now imagine I've built a very good technology. You can go license it to Samsung. You can go license it to some other big company and still make a lot of money. So whenever you are actually supporting students and all, think of innovation as two pronged, right? One is them making innovation and building their companies. Second is them actually selling to other companies or licensing to other companies and making money. So that is where the whole thing is, right? Uh, so the last part that I want to cover before we, you know, start getting to the questions and all, right? I want you to understand a very important thing, right? Understanding the difference between a restaurant and a Zomato, right? Um, so 
this is a very typical example of this right a lot of us actually confuse a startup with a small business because we think that any company that's being started is a small business sorry is a startup right uh, so i keep getting a lot of people who have this common notions common myth saying that hey uh, i'm building a startup but there yet another uh, you know small business actually the 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 problem with this is if you don't identify startups like startups the whole concepts the principles the methods that you're using are very different for startups and small businesses the garment policies are very different for startups and small businesses right the way they execute operationally are very different from startups and small businesses so it's very important to understand the difference between startups and small businesses if you don't do that then there's a huge problem because at the end of the day they 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 can't do just as the company they might be just taking a small business and really trying to you know make it a unicorn or they think that their idea is not good because it's not scaling but the problem is it's not a scalable idea right if you're taking a small restaurant right if you're taking a small restaurant it's a typical example of a small business right when you're taking a small example of small business now imagine what's happening i go have a chef i put a place i have some interior designing done and i put marketing out and start getting a restaurant right all of us in the room know this but if i say hey go let's start zomato a lot of us would not be clear where to start in fact zomato is still not profitable in all the fronts right swiggy is not still profitable uber is not profitable everyone is losing anything from 2 to 7000 crores paytm right every year this is the kind of losses they are going through but still they are putting in money because they are looking at that future where they'll start getting profitable and their losses get minimal and minimal every year as they go right so i'll ask you a quick question here how do you differentiate between a small business and a startup yep small business is a pre tested idea and startup is a new thing absolutely right that's a great way to look at it abhimanyu anybody else wants to add to that i think you have summarized it pretty well business are generally the common things which everybody is doing innovation is and uh, this startup is a idea and plan executing in a new way absolutely new thought absolutely sir uh, thank you so much right uh, so this is where uh, the beauty of this whole system is right i'll give you a very nice way to actually you know remember this if i go and say how many restaurants are there in market if there are lakhs and lakhs and lakhs and crores of restaurants that means that it is a pre tested repeatable idea that means that everyone in the market know how to do it it's just about maybe some minor changes here and there or minor branding here and there but if you go and say how many zomatos are there in the market how many swiggies are there in the market you can literally count them on your fingers or you know it will probably be less than 50 right now this is how you can say that something is new something is being figured out something is still not clear about what it is right i've put some slides you can read it later so a typical small business versus a startup you know this is where the beauty is like new products new markets unknown customers high risk high reward right this is like what it is for small businesses it's known they are this self sufficient or like locally they are good and all small businesses can also scale but the way to do it is small businesses have to innovate they have to you know bring in some innovation and that's how they can move from here to here as well it's not that small business have to be small businesses but after the small businesses start innovating they'll not be small business anymore right they'll actually launch another company in a way that is where uh, this is where what the initial things are and even if you look at the ecosystem right the startup india and everything is actually doing a lot around this because your traditional banks and all don't fund into small businesses right if you go and ask for a loan in sbi they'll not give us money because they'll say hey you don't have you know any machinery you don't have any plant you don't have any assets to you know put in the bank to say that you know give me a loan on this but if you look at this whole thing now there's like funding and this whole landscape that's coming up that is where you will in the upcoming sessions probably get around that right so anyways all these like slides that i put in right now let's go to the important point of what all constitute a startup ecosystem right we were talking about ecosystem 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 right and i'll definitely answer abhimanyu sir's question as well on how to bring innovation as well right after we finish up this so uh, you know every startup starts with like you know basic problem solution right they are trying to see i have a problem because like let's say i want to go from here to there and there is no easy way 
I am trying to come up with a new solution that is solving. And once that problem and solution makes sense, then they get to product market fit. Because now, if you take a Swiggy, Swiggy doesn't know whether people want an app to deliver food or not. They have been, you know, figuring out whether Swiggy is like useful to the market. If so, what is the model? What is the business model? How much money should they take a cut? They're still in the process of like, you know, figuring this out. And after that, you get to the scale, right? And this is where once you understand that everyone wants it now, you know, they know that people want Swiggy. And now they're pushing it higher and higher and higher where, you know, it's like on a high scale model, right? That is why everything is now becoming where pretty much it is like very beautifully done in a way where our companies are going global. And like, you know, if you look at Ola, right? Ola is now in UK, OYO is now in UK. A lot of these companies out of India are now going to the global markets and, you know, starting to run markets there, right? That is the beauty of what startups can achieve in very short amount of time. So let's talk about startup ecosystem, right? I'll just spend the next 10, 15 minutes on ecosystem. And then, you know, I'm pretty much uh, done with my uh, presentation. We'll, we'll discuss on questions. We'll discuss on like, you know, trends or, you know, whatever you want to know where to figure out and all. I'm happy to support on that, right? So uh, coming to the startup ecosystem part, all of you might be thinking, how do we build India to be one of the most powerful spaces around, you know, innovation and startups, right? Because China, US, a lot of global guys are very aggressively competing or they're ahead of us. And now India is just picking up, but still India is still very basic. Uh, trust me, take my word on that because I have worked abroad in the US, I've seen ecosystems abroad. I've worked in the ecosystem innovation wings of companies and all that stuff. And when I see them and when I see India, right? India is still like way, 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 way behind, right? We have still a lot to do. And where we are is just like the initial starting steps, I would say probably like, you know, 10% of the 100% that we need to do. And uh, each of your support will become very instrumental in shaping up this ecosystem. So now let's talk about how do we build innovation, right? Now, what happens is right now, first and foremost is awareness, right? Everyone should know about startups. So that is happening now. Previously, uh, you know, probably 10 years ago, even if you go and say startups, nobody around you will know startups, right? Or hardly very few people will know about startups, right? Because innovation was not like a common thing. Startups were not like common thing. Even if somebody's building startup, everyone used to look at them saying that, hey, who is this odd person, right? What is he trying to do, right? Why is he not doing a regular job, right? But now when you look at it, everyone is saying, hey, go start companies, go launch companies because they're seeing success stories and all. So what happened in this process is basically all of these entities started coming together, right? So what are the different types of entities? Let's go one by one, right? First and foremost, the center of the world is the people who are starting companies, right? It could be students, it could be people working in companies, it could be entrepreneurs who are starting again, it could be people running traditional businesses who want to run innovation, right? It could be even like government, you know, putting out some stuff on innovation. Uh, like problem statements where you know a lot of entrepreneurs are encouraged to do stuff so the startup in, uh, ecosystem now let's say i'm a founder like let's say take my own story right I'll, I'll give you my own example and i'll tell you how is this ecosystem supporting me or supporting a founder right now let's say i come up with a nice idea and say hey i need help right first of all i don't know you know how this idea works how the uh, how to put a business together, you know, where to go get my company registration done, where to get legal stuff done, right? Where to get the support system, right? Initial guidance, because I might be new to our industry. I might not know everything. I haven't built a company before, right? So this is where I start looking for help. When I start looking for help, right? There are these organizations that are like the first bunch of organizations that you can call as support organizations, right? This is where all of you would come into play, uh, right? This and this probably a combination of these two. So incubators and all come under support organizations. So I'm in that initial stages. I just have an idea. I'm just working on my basic prototype and all. I come to an incubator. Let's say I come to Andhra University incubator and I say, hey, Ravi, I need help. I'm working on a startup idea. You know, can you guide me? Can you mentor me? X, Y, Z. Yeah. So pretty much uh, what an incubator does is um, again, somebody has to mute. Dr. Abhishek, can you mute yourself? Dr. Abhishek, can you please mute yourself? Okay, uh, so pretty much, uh, uh, yeah, I think he's not available. 
So pretty much uh, coming back to this, right? Uh, support our organizations, incubators. Now, incubator is like an incubator. Like think of like a baby, right? A small baby, which is like just six to eight months, which is out of a mother's womb or, you know, the mother's womb. And they initially need ventilator support. They need incubation support, right? That is why even over there, you call it an incubator. A baby is being put into an incubator because that baby needs that initial support till it gets to 37 weeks or 40 weeks where the baby can survive by itself. Similarly, a startup is like a baby, right? They are figuring out everything. They need a support system where, you know, you need to start looking at them and seeing how can you support them and what are the things that they'll need. First and foremost, they'll need guidance, right? They'll need mentors, advisors and all. People who already have done it, people who have seen it, people who can guide them, all these guys would actually be able to help them. That is like the first level of support system in an incubator. Then, you know, they would need money, right? Obviously, you know, they'll have limited money. They'll you know, take their own money. That is where a lot of people might have ideas, but they don't have money to try the ideas or work on their ideas. So all of you in AICs have some fund allocated for it, where you can actually go in and, you know, put some seed fund or give them some basic 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs to get it to some level where they can go for the next round of funding and all, right? And similarly, you can give them working space, you can give them patenting support, you can give them knowledge, education, right? So the support organizations are like, you know, multifold. One is incubators, then there is something called accelerators. Accelerators come in at a later stage, right? Just like incubators are in that incubation system, accelerators come at a later stage, where accelerators come in at a stage where the company is really growing. They're like, you know, already they've figured out how to, you know, solve it in Hyderabad and now they want to go to 20 cities. Now they'll go for an accelerator because they already have figured out their thing and now they want to really accelerate. They want to really take it big, right? That is where accelerators are a different type of support organization that you will keep hearing about. Now, where do universities come into play? Universities will come into play where you are talking about educating students, educating even alumni on entrepreneurship, right? Because a lot of them don't even know the fundamentals of entrepreneurship. They think it is just like starting another service company, just like something else, and they don't have the basics. So if you actually build curriculums that are really supporting them at a grassroots level, right, where they really understand during their two to four years of education, how startups are built, if they get a chance to do internships, if they get a chance to engage with startups, they will really learn. And in the future, they might work with startups or they might go build their own company. As well, right? So universities play a huge piece both in terms of education and second even in terms of research. Right? If you have like research labs, I would re highly recommend all of you to check out how Stanford, how MIT and all of them run research abroad. In India, we just commission projects and then, you know, uh, we try to do research and then think whether it's commercializable or not. But if you look at a Stanford and all these, right, 98% of their uh, come from, uh, college funds come from patents. The way the US ecosystem works is in research, they actually first figure out what is the commercial application of an innovation and then come back and do research. They don't start with research. Research is an outcome of building a company or building commercialization. That is why you look at a lot of these big companies pumping in huge amount of money, right? In India, only government is pumping in, you know, or, or some big companies are pumping in. In US and all, you see a lot of companies working with universities very closely because they keep pumping in more and more money. They get out ideas, they use it for themselves, or a lot of these are rolled up into startups. That is why innovation is very high abroad and innovation is just picking up in India, right? And also there are support organizations like Thai, you know, the partners of, you know, even this program. A lot of these independent organizations, networks, again, also, they do a lot of these same things like incubators and they work with incubators and collaboratively work with others. And then there are big companies, like I said, right? You know, all these big companies obviously have corporate accelerators. I'm not sure how many of you have actually uh, understood this term, but corporate incubators and corporate accelerators are like big companies all have a startup thing, including the likes of Geo, Microsoft, Google, or even Indian companies, right? A lot of them are off late building something called corporate uh, startup, uh, you know, corporate uh, innovation, right? That is what they call, right? Or corporate. Uh, uh, you know, systems inside where it's like a startup thing within a bigger company that is focusing on startups. So this team is always on the lookout for startups or helping startups and ideas. So that way, a lot of big companies are keeping in touch with startups, right? That's a big companies. And then you have all the investment things, right? From individual investors to, you know, founders who are becoming angel investors to, 
you know uh, each of you funding it to you know big uh, venture capitalists private equity firms there are like you know investments available in many many forms so all of them are also important piece of the ecosystem then research organizations are also there like you know take all these research organizations they have huge wealth of knowledge now let's say a founder wants some research around healthcare you should be able to connect them with the right research organization and get their you know pieces figured out much faster so that way when i was talking about it right it's a cyclical collaborative system that needs to be coming together so as an incubator or an aic all of you should be decently connected with each of them but like i said think of it like it should be very founder focused or you know founder centric it's not about what we want or not what garment wants i'll tell you even the problems right um been only talking the nice things i'll i'll probably even share in terms of how founders struggle with this whole ecosystem as well because all of you might be thinking that i'm doing a great job of setting up an aic and helping people but lot of aics uh, even when they set up right they struggle in some of the areas i'm also going to talk about that for you so that you know all of you also don't make the same mistakes so whenever you're building ecosystems right most of the times uh you know bringing in people who really understand these is very critical a lot of times what happens is government mandates that you know you have to do this 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 because they are giving one common guidelines but i think it's understanding what is popular in your local space right you know some of the cities might be on the sea side or ocean side and there might be a lot of you know ideas and startups especially around you know uh, fishing or it could be around uh, seafood like different different things right or you might be in areas where there is like lot of fertile land and farming could be a huge thing there could be a lot of agri stuff coming up if you take hyderabad that is very uh, popular more on pharma industry right and then you have places which are more like you know financial industry is very uh, strong in uh, mumbai right bangalore is very strong in tech so everyone has their own strengths you need to really understand your strengths and start encouraging such type of startups and really give them that kind of support system where you are not just becoming another building or just another program for them but you need to really work with them learn with them and get them that kind of help right because one of the major uh, uh, you know probably uh, pitfalls that i see a lot of aics when they establishes most of the investments go into buildings most of the investments go into setting up more research labs that nobody is using right and all these are like you know uh, standard things and a uh, founder is not getting the help a startup is not getting the help they will never tell you they will never complain to you because at the end of the day they don't want to spoil relationships with you right they always want to be in good books with you they go and tell outside saying that i'm not getting any help and all because i work with founders i run founder networks so i'm somebody who's on this side of the world and that side of the world so i understand both sides of the system so i'm sharing very genuine feedback based on everything that i've learned right so with this i'll kind of kind of stop it here but yeah there is plenty of stuff i'll show you just in the next 5 minutes i'll show you some very interesting links where you can find a lot of reports you know go deeper into the ecosystem understand ecosystem and trust me there's a lot to learn from global ecosystems but don't just copy because what worked in us might not work in india right we need to just get inspired but we should not copy because the beauty is not in copying the beauty is in getting inspired and innovating in india right that's the beauty that all of us should look at so again i put one more slide you know more in terms of all the education stuff what happened and all so this is pretty much uh, everything that i really wanted to kind of cover on i'll just show you three or four links or sites that might actually help you in terms of moving these pieces and then you know we'll just jump to the q and a part you know we'll have a more active discussion about innovation startups or what can we do and all i'll keep my uh, details out here more than happy to connect but before we get in there right i'll start showing you some of the reports um so this is like a wonderful site uh, data reporter uh, if you go check out they have a huge database of all the stuff around digital what's happening across the world right in africa america all the countries right what's happening what is the story around each of these country right uh, if you really want to go check it out it's a wonderful uh, website to check out i've just pulled up india right and if you go start checking out right uh, you will start seeing everything that's happening in these countries right what is the population what is going on right uh, what is the penetration right so this way once you start understanding data right you start understanding what are the trends coming up what should you focus on what what are the next big ideas right so all of them are opportunities right if people are spending more time on social media 
then there's a lot more opportunity to sell on social media. If people are actually listening to podcasts, then probably you'll see a lot of podcasts coming up, right? So all of these are like, you know, I'm not going through all this. I'll share all these links with you. But, you know, there's one side that I want to share, right? The second uh, very good side that a lot of people don't fully explore is the Startup India site itself, right? So there are plenty of stuff. So uh, the, the site is not marketed well or like, you know, hasn't been much in use in general, right? But when you start looking at it, they're actually compiling a lot of resources, right? You have a lot of data, a lot of market research reports are available for free if you go and check out, right? Uh, so all these things are something that will really give you a sense of understanding the ecosystem, right? All of you need to really understand the ecosystem before you can help the ecosystem. If you don't understand the ecosystem, if you don't understand startups deep down, you'll only be helping them at a peripheral level, right? Which is like uh, putting a high level makeup on something. It's not like, you know, going deeper into it. So you can go check out the ecosystem reports, investment report, industry-wise reports, you know, data reports, finance reports. And even when you Google it out, you will find plenty of reports, right? And there are a lot of good websites like your story uh, in 42 and all this which are focusing on startups cover a lot of stuff um, you know you can see all the government schemes i think all of you might already be very well aware of all this you know having got the aic in place so there's so many government schemes uh, schemes that most of the founders don't even know if you go to a founder and say hey what are the government policies in your state most of them will not know what are the benefits you can get most of them will not know i've registered with startup india most of them will not have done Right, so this is where a lot of these basics are some things that you can look at, and also Startup India is collaborating with a lot of global organizations to run competitions, you know, market access and all these. Right, how to take your company globally or solve your problem in a different country. So there's a lot of wealth of knowledge that I would definitely recommend all of you checking out. Right, and uh, if you're looking at reports and all, I shared about that in Startup India. You can even you can look at, you know, Startup India has built very good reports on achievements and all that stuff. So keeping aside the pros and cons and like, you know, opinions of people, you can always look at what's happening in the landscape, right? So there's plenty of information again over here uh, in terms of metrics, what are the government policies, what are they trying to do? If you start understanding this, right, you can actually start helping your local ecosystem really well. Or you can even recommend a lot of good changes to the central government or, you know, to the DP, uh, you know, the central uh, bodies, right? Uh, DIPPT and all these things where you are actually telling them saying that hey, these are some of the suggestions that will really help us you know build in India make in India grow in India right these are the changes because it's a collaboration with the government so all of you become a very important catalyst in this process right so again if you want to check out global right there are sites like startup genome and all right uh, startup genome and all are uh, something which are like uh, global sites where you can uh, literally check out the whole uh, reports around every ecosystem in the world, not just India. Okay, you can check out country by country by country ecosystem. Okay, like let's say you want to check out Africa, you want to check uh, Singapore, you want to check Malaysia, doesn't matter. You can just go in, you can find an ecosystem. See, they have built reports for all these places. So you can check out startupgenome.com. So every year they launch updated reports. Okay. So that way uh, you can get in touch, you can work with them or you know, you can launch your own stuff. I've just pulled an India report for all of your knowledge, right? So I'm just putting uh, ecosystem report and uh, uh, so I'm just showing you the global report actually, not the India report. Um, so here, you know, you have all these data, see this, what's happening in Asia, what's happening in Africa, what's happening in US, Latin America, right? What are the frameworks? What are the methodologies? All these are things that you can actually absorb, you know, by region they have covered. Right, uh, you know, off late, like, uh, you know, Telangana has been really picking up in the last uh, five years, 10 years. So, you know, they are starting to put all these, you know, they're starting to get the visibility, right? Similarly, a lot of other cities can also get there, right, uh, by putting a lot of these things. So, I would highly recommend reading this report. It's free. You don't have to pay anything. Everything that I'm showing you is free. You don't have to pay one single rupee anywhere, right? Uh, so, you have to, I'm just telling you this wealth of knowledge available on the internet. All you need to do is just go and browse and browse and browse and read, right? You'll start seeing which countries are really doing well, why are they doing well, right? Uh, where do they stand? How is innovation working in those countries, right? Uh, you'll get all the market statistics. You will find what are the best practices that they do, a lot of these things. So this way, don't think just local. Also think global in terms of how everyone is 
shaping up and that whole world will start impacting india and india will start impacting the whole world so this is another uh, good place that uh, you know i would recommend and uh, another uh, good suggestion i have is a lot of these governments in each of these countries also launch their own report just like india launch a startup india report and just showing an example of singapore right uh, singapore wants to attract more people to come to singapore africa wants to attract more people to come to africa europe wants to attract more people to come to europe right so a lot of these policies a lot of these research everything the local support system you know which all are the places to go who to get in touch with you know what are the reasons why somebody should go to singapore everyone is putting all this so if you are really aware right the kind of programs you can do to support your startups the kind of collaborations you can do to support the startups is going to be like very very uh, beneficial for all of them in the process right so yeah with that i'll uh, kind of uh, stop it i'm sure it's already a lot of information overload but uh, i really wanted to do it uh, in terms of helping you understand the broader bunch of things and see this digital trends like how india is shaping up this is just india trends everything is going crazy up and up and up and next 5 years 10 years you are going to literally see there is going to be a software for everything you'll start seeing automation picking up way beyond you ever expo- uh, thought of you'll see solar electric picking up beyond your imagination right you'll see virtual reality artificial reality facebook has launched meta you'll see machine learning artificial intelligence blockchain technologies cryptocurrencies everything starting to take over so we are at a stage where we can't really complain that i know this i don't know this i want to read about this i don't want to read about this it's more about are you up with the trend or you are not if you are not you are going to die if you are up with the trend you are probably going to go places with it right so there is not like somebody is safe or somebody is not safe everyone is at risk now so i would highly recommend all of you to actually get into this space and start looking at it and google is your best friend and there's plenty of information out on the internet right so with that i would kind of uh, close on this i will just uh, start with the q and a but uh, i know also sharing my contact details uh, just in case uh, sorry i'm sharing my contact details just for uh, your reference right uh, you can uh, get in touch with me on linkedin or uh, you know on whatsapp on this phone or like there's my number for both or there's my email it's hello at pdorna.com uh, it's just uh, pravindorna in a shorter form p d o r n a dot com So you can even drop a mail, and I'm happy to respond. That's more of my personal mail ID, uh, and then I have my company mail ID as well. So, but this is a great place to reach out to me one to one if you're reaching out, or LinkedIn. Uh, these numbers are great places to be. Now, uh, I think uh, let's uh, actually start going and discussing. Yeah, it's not uh, Drona. A lot of people know Drona Charya, so they associate with D R O N A. Uh, it's not D R O N A. It's D O R N A, right? Uh, so it's Pravin Drona. so that's the thing like that um, so i'll uh, take up abhimanyu's questions to start with right abhimanyu sir and uh, then uh, rest of you any other questions you have you know we have the next 15 20 minutes to actually go through the questions right uh, so the first question is uh, how does innovation uh, spring up right so uh, you know i request all of you to put all your questions don't think it's a good question bad question doesn't matter right now we are uh, in a stage where all of us are learning together so please put it out uh, would love to have a discussion i'm sure all of you are very knowledgeable in your respective areas and i'm i'm happy to learn as well anything that i don't know so please uh, share your knowledge and at the same time ask questions anything that i can share with my last 10 to 15 years of experience in the startup space i'm happy to do that as well right so the first question here is uh, how does innovation spring up um, so innovation actually uh, comes up a lot with this whole ecosystem coming together but you might ask a small question saying that how do i bring innovation in my own college right a lot of you might have uh, the standard question right uh, so uh, i'll i'll recommend something to all of you okay stanford podcast uh, there is uh, I, i think all of you know stanford right uh, the stanford has a podcast uh, if needed i'll actually pick up the link and also share you can go to the stanford podcast econ right uh, and actually start looking at uh, one podcast especially so i'll tell you an experiment done by teacher right again in stanford university one of the professor what they did was they said sorry what they said was uh, i'll give you let's say 1000 rupees for each of you like let's say you are in a class of 60 students okay Uh, i'm just uh, rephrasing it to indian context okay i didn't want to complicate it to us context uh, all of you can go check out it's a one hour 
uh, audio podcast. It's beautiful. Uh, it'll teach you a lot about innovation, right? Um, so coming back to this, now let's say you have a class of 60 students and you want to drive innovation in them, right? One of the ways in driving innovation is not theory and theory and theory, right? Theory is just like one piece of it. The beauty comes it into practicals. Now, so what this professor did was, this professor actually, let's say, gave 1,000 rupees to each student. And he said, how much money can you make in the next one day, right? I'll give you 24 hours of time. Each of you go, do whatever you want to do, right? You should not take any existing help and all that stuff, but you have to innovate and come up with your own ideas. And trust me, uh, the next 24 hours, people, the students were like super excited. They all went and built a lot of ideas. Somebody said, I'll take this thousand rupees. They bought some stuff and they sold stuff and made more money on it. They made thousand, two thousand rupees. Somebody said, I'll buy some education material and teach somebody. Right. Somebody said, I will do this. I'll do something else. Right. So a lot of people actually started uh, using that money in very, very different ways. And end of the day, when next day, when people came back, right, some of them had 5,000 rupees, some of them made 3,000 rupees, some of them made 1,000 rupees. Right. So there is huge amount of potential in your students. So don't try to worry about startups and startups. Ask them to start working on the smallest of ideas. Give them problems in your campus. Give them challenges, put small competitions, right? Let's say all of you go back to your colleges and say, hey, you know, uh, let's come up with a nice competition where, uh, you know, uh, this is the problem that we have. Whoever solves this will get a 10,000 cash prize. Now see how people will come up with amazing ideas. This is how you make them do again and again, right? That whole problem solving mindset is what will really drive innovation. And after that, giving them the right kind of education around how to take money for something, right? I'll give you a small example. In US, they have this thing called, uh, you know, lemonade stands, right? They sell lemonade. So they have like an entrepreneurship day or a lemonade day. Like if you look at Boston and all these cities, what they do is they run a citywide thing where all the small kids, there is a day where they sell lemonade, right? It's like lemon juice. They make uh, lemon juice and they sell. So it's like a competition where all the kids right from their younger days, right? When they're like six years, eight years, Right from that age, kids are actually made to sell. Kids are actually made to show that you can give something and take something, right? Money for it. So this is the kind of practices you need to do. Don't worry about them succeeding or failing. Ask all of them to solve small problems. Even if they want to sell t-shirts, ask them to go do it. Don't worry about innovation as a word. Innovation comes once they understand the basics in place, right? Innovation doesn't start with innovation. Innovation always starts when they can apply their ideas they do the most standard traditional small businesses and then they start innovating from there further and further and further. So the, the simple answer to Avinu Sir's question is make them do, put challenges, ask them to force them to think out of the box and give them that global exposure. And that's not just inside your campus. Ask them to go work with a lot of startups, ask them to go out and see so many things, ask them to present, get a lot of speakers who are doing very good things to come and talk at your place. Right? Just make them excited. Show them that. Right? Uh, imagine if I'm making like 10,000 rupees per month as a student, all my fellow students would be super excited. Right? Everyone wants to then start their businesses. Somebody wants to make 20,000. Somebody wants to make 50,000. So a lot of them don't look at role models. Role models are within them, among them. They don't look at professors. They don't look at founders. No. They only look at people around them. Students look at other students. They say, hey, that guy is doing better than me. I want to cross him. So you need to inculcate that kind of competition at the same time collaboration kind of thing in that, right? So the second kind of innovation is research. Uh, Abhimanyu, so I brought up another question as well. Uh, so first I told about grassroots level innovation, right? How students can bring out innovation. And second is in terms of how can you do uh, research? So one of the best ways to do research is to actually start building technology transfer offices in case you don't have. If you have it, that's cool. Uh, technology transfer offices are places where you can research on what ideas already exist in market, what products exist in market and all. You can see what is patentable or not. So when you do TTOs, right, or you set up TTOs as a part of AICs, you can definitely set up TTOs, technology transfer offices. You can actually go and set it up and any student coming in who is interested in research, and not only students, by the way, any faculty doing very good research, right, you can all actually be part of TTO and see which companies need it, what kind of uh, patenting needs to be done and all. That is like very, very important, right? Because all of the professors make one simple mistake, right? All of you make one simple mistake or at least some of you might 
uh, unknowingly make that mistake. So let me share what that is. All of you publish research papers, right? Uh, before publishing a research paper, all you need to do is you need to apply for a provisional patent, right? Or you need to apply for a patent, right? After you do that, you publish it anywhere, you still own the research. But if you publish it and then apply for a patent, your whole research goes for a toss. Because the moment it is published anywhere, it is not eligible for patenting or you can never take the ownership. So a lot of these universities, right, they make the standard mistake of publishing the papers in a hurry. But the point is, if you feel that this is, has commercial potential, you need to first actually uh, patent it or apply for a patent and within one month, you can go publish anywhere without any problem. And it takes around 18 months to go through the patenting process and all, right? So that is where I would say, that, do that. And the second thing, what I would recommend is uh, work with companies, work with most of these startups, new age companies, and try to see how do we actually go about collaborating, right? Now, let's say you go and ask a, a refrigeration and air conditioning company saying that, hey, what is your problem? You go and ask, let's say an automobile company, like let's say you go to Maruti and say, what are your problems? Will solve some of them or we'll figure out research collaboratively, right? So this way, each of your areas based on your strengths in your universities, I would recommend each of you to actually figure out collaborations because go take problem statements from the companies, do research around that, figure out that, and also strike a deal with them saying that, you know, how can you commercialize and make money, including the professors, faculties, right? Getting a part of it so that you incentivize them for doing the research and doing more research and getting more innovation. At the same time, working with companies so that there is win-win in this whole equation. So that way you don't have to depend a lot on government funds beyond a point, right? Even the government is giving you funds for five years, 10 years, because they want you to figure out a much more scalable system uh, that is beyond just any basic stuff. And this is where you can, you should start thinking like a business, right? It's not like thinking like a nonprofit doing charity. All of you should also do a lot of support, but at the same time, you are a startup in yourself who is trying to figure out a lot of things, right? So with that, I hope Abhimanyu sir, uh, you got the answers to your questions. Um, uh, yeah, I'll uh, move on to Srihari sir's question next and then I'll get to the other questions. Right, uh, Srihari sir said, uh, could you provide some thought process to develop curriculum for entrepreneurship in our colleges? Uh, right, uh, I think that's a great question, sir. Uh, so uh, first of all, a lot of them might be saying that we will do one workshop, we'll do one month program. Nothing happens in one day, one month, right? Uh, because even your standard subjects are taught for so long, they go through a four-year course. So there's so much rigor that needs to shaping people's mindset and the thinking, right? So whenever we're talking about curriculums and all, what I would recommend is there are already wonderful courses, right? Uh, out here, like, you know, you can check out Coursera. If you want, I'll just show you, right? I'll show you some wonderful curriculum. So one of the things what you can do is you can do a combination of practical plus theoretical, right? You need to put a combination. It can't be pure theory and people go through you know, a lot of theory. A lot of courses that I have attended or that I teach myself as well, it is a combination of people working on their ideas. It is not even like people just sitting and listening in my class. The way I design curriculums is I, everyone has to come up with an idea. They have to work in teams. They have to figure out, they have to fail. I literally make them go through that life cycle, right? When they go through that life cycle, what happens is during that period, give them the mentorship, give them that mindset support, give them the resources they need, you know, make them feel comfortable that failure is part of the game. So I'll show you some of these things. So if you're looking at curriculums and all, there are already a lot of wonderful uh, curriculums out there, but further, if you want to check out, uh, so internet has enough information on that, right? Uh, but I would also tell you curriculums at a much broader level, but you can go to Coursera, you can go to edX, right? All of you might be super aware of all this go check out entrepreneurship curriculums of a lot of these global universities, right? They have built a very good uh, curriculum to actually deliver. And all of them are like very strong in uh, delivering entrepreneurship education. So you can always go check out, or in fact, each of you can also take it to just experience what entrepreneurship is about so that you can equip yourself better to help students and all, right? Uh, so if you just go type for entrepreneurship, you'll see plenty of courses out here on entrepreneurship and businesses, right? So that is like one place. The second thing what I would recommend is focus heavily on early stage. Okay, uh, yeah, here if you see, right, uh, you can look at businesses and you'll have entrepreneurship, right? Yeah, I think because I'm sharing the screen and all, it's a bit slow. But otherwise, you know, you can just go check out, uh, you know, businesses, 
and you can look at entrepreneurship will also be one of the vertical coming in you know, or you can just search in this right uh, there are wonderful courses by the way uh, so yeah see so you can actually have the courses on entrepreneurship so similarly there are plenty of courses on entrepreneurship just see how you can take your idea to a business how to scale it how to grow it so a lot of them have built like wonderful curriculums that you can pick up from right so they already say you know how to develop an uh, opportunity how to come up with an idea how to get growth how to finance your idea how to patent like there are plenty like this is just one example right you can take curriculum support from a lot of these things or uh, by the way another good thing that i want to tell you is a lot of these universities will also be open for collaboration okay so you can always you know build co branded programs right uh, like how innovate has uh, uh the tripathi based accelerator they have collaborated with ut austin right so that way each of you can actually collaborate with a lot of global ones in building that curriculum support uh, but just think through the whole life cycle when you're building a curriculum right break it down into one year if you ask me right have initial first three months where you are focusing on how to come up with ideas because a lot of them don't even know how to do ideation you have a session on ideation later today but a lot of them don't know how to go about an idea how to see a problem how to solve a problem right then help them figure out how to build their basic version right what skills do they need how to they register how do they build a business model right and all these things come into play right and then you know you can tell them how to sell that right so you don't even have to tell them how to how to scale a company and all right that is not at all needed in their first year tell them how to successfully come from an idea to building something small that they can sell right and they are making money out of it that's like a huge learning experience in the process they learn everything right in terms of how to come up with ideas who to talk to how to get mentoring how to get money how to sell something how to build marketing how to do sales there are so many skills involved in just taking an idea from an idea to a small product and if you want to make it very exciting you can put a competition right where you can incentivize them or you can give them visibility money or funding support xyz where a lot of these will super get super excited and don't worry about solving it for everyone start small show examples show results and then other students will start picking it up so that is how i would recommend uh, you know designing your curriculum but like i said right uh, just like each of you might be extremely good at your subjects uh, find people who are extremely good at entrepreneurship and work with them in building curriculum start them uh you know coming up uh, with everything because it takes significant amount of time to also build the way it has to be delivered because a lot of uh you know academia might not have that depth of uh, knowledge that is where you know your support organizations mentors founders you know other networks uh, can be great places to collaborate in designing the right cur- curriculum and delivering the right curriculum so i hope that answers your question uh, sri hari sir and uh, yeah thank you sir uh, coming to the next one uh, vimani sir has asked for innovation to take place there needs to be an entrepreneurial mindset oh yeah yeah i think that's a great question sorry i missed this so uh, yeah it all starts from there right uh, at the end of the day it's all about mindset you know a person can get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and study or a person can sleep till 8 o'clock it's a mindset uh, so similarly how do we actually encourage all of them to actually change the mindset is one is definitely showing them examples of people around or showing how successful people have done it but the real mindset change comes when they have a need right uh, like you know for example if you look at somebody who's like a daily wage laborer right or daily wage worker they have a need so their mindset is like they have to do it somebody who is luxurious they are like it's okay i'll sleep today i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it day after tomorrow right a lot of times we are always like in that mindset where it doesn't happen the best way to you know get their mindset is put them in places where they can get exposure right uh, like for example if if i am in a class where everyone is like very silent chilled out they're not doing anything do you think i'll be motivated absolutely not now take me and take me to a trip or take me to a place where or make me work with a startup as a part of three month program or six month program right uh, you know take them and let them go work in that office let them learn stuff let them see what the real world is right and uh, let them work on their own ideas like i said competition and all only by doing right the mindset changes because even entrepreneurship is a discovery process everyone is not an entrepreneur right all of us really push it and say that everyone is an entrepreneur everyone is a startup it it doesn't work that way because a lot of people enjoy different things it's a, it's always about 
telling them that this is what entrepreneurship is, entrepreneurial mindset is. But at the end of the day, people implementing in their own lives and careers is what it is, right? So we need to just get them this whole entrepreneurial mindset that we are talking again and again is about seeing a problem, solving a problem, and doing whatever it takes. These are the three words, right? Seeing a problem, solving a problem, and doing whatever it takes to solve the problem. This is what is entrepreneurial mindset. If we can actually drive this point into their brains, right? That can work, but that will only work when you make them solve problems. As of today, none of the students are solving problems. Make them solve problems around your campus. Make them solve problems around your local areas. Make them solve problems around what they see, what they feel excited about. Make them do again and again. Trust me, in one year, if you don't see a good bunch of people with better entrepreneurial mindset, I can challenge that. Right? It's all about the rigor of doing, 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 and getting exposure, and also giving them exposure to the right bunch of people, right bunch of places, and all because. you can't be in the remotest of places and hope that magic will happen there right a lot of times people go to places to experience and come back right like i have went to us studied over there worked abroad did set of things and i'm coming back and implementing a lot of things here similarly you need to give that kind of support in getting there and do that probably pick a bunch of really good people but at the end of the day you know you take the call on who you want to invest and really grow them on right so that is uh, where uh, i would recommend I hope that answers your question, Abhi Manas. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, any more questions? I think uh, we're in the last three, four minutes. But I hope uh, I was really trying to be quick as well because it's a complicated topic explaining the whole ecosystem. Because I'm not just talking about an idea or about a startup. I'm talking about how this whole world comes together in building a startup, right? I hope uh, it has done justice to uh, most of you guys in terms of. at least getting a sense on why it is very important right otherwise india will be marginalized by all the rest of the world yeah uh, abhimanyu sir go ahead sir how do you see the boom uh, of internet in india and its effect on startup boom uh, internet like i said is just very minimal penetration right uh, so still we are 45% just with 45% you are seeing this kind of numbers imagine this doubles and you see like lakhs and lakhs of startups coming up india is going to blow up right or be like a power center in itself right so it is just a starting trust me in the next 5 to 10 years you will see india really going big even if the ecosystem is supporting or not there are so many founders investors who are invested into this kind of ecosystem where they want to make money they want to solve problems that you will see startups coming irrespective of who are stopping it stuff will happen right so it is just starting uh, be part of it and i think it's an exciting time all right uh, and any scope for indian language in startups uh, ramesh sir has asked a wonderful question actually right you know a lot of global companies will never focus on indian languages right uh, the max googles microsofts will do but rest of them will never do uh, so that is why you see vernacular languages are like a huge bunch of companies coming up right a uh, lot of these are pratilipi or there are other ones where you can write in telugu write in hindi write in kannada right there are so many places where you can actually uh, do it so vernacular is a huge huge market anything that can be served on vernacular can be huge but like i said at the end of the day look for that problem and solution and is there a business model to it so a lot of people always start with idea they say that hey, i have this cool idea today morning and i want to start something but nobody wants it nobody wants to pay for it then you know it is a waste of time right so instead of that if i make a idea and i say you want, you are are you so interested to pay for it then i'll build it then that's there right so yeah uh, so ramesh sir you can actually look at triplet and all these uh, you know which are doing nlp and language research and all right so a uh, lot of these companies actually want a uh, lot of knowledge algorithms patents around uh, nlp and all because uh, vernacular is huge and it is going to be huge irrespective of how english is used in india there is always a huge market because 65% of indian market is rural and vernacular is still the huge means of communication except companies which are like global companies which are selling abroad where us is like the common language to look at most of the indian companies vernacular including chat including a lot of these support systems help questions everything you know vernacular is still going to be a huge piece and uh, it's not as you rightly said it's probably getting endangered in some ways but it is probably taking a different shape uh, but uh, i think uh, you know a good set of startups coming in you can just search for vernacular startups and you'll start seeing a lot of vernacular startups coming up or 
a lot of them are already funded 100 crores and higher as well so there's a huge bunch of market coming up around that okay so uh, with that i think uh, i'm almost uh, close to the time uh, thank you so much uh, really appreciated the comments uh, glad that it was informative helpful and uh, welcome to the world of startups and trust me as you start looking at it from a world view we'll start enjoying how beautiful impact that all of you are creating by helping startups building startups and uh, coming together there's going to be a huge learning curve and all of you don't think like universities or education institutions you think like startups you be hacky use the money in the right places you know you figure out you solve it if you don't understand the startup sit with them work with them make it happen for them when you do that hands on right that is when you are going to support startups really beautifully right uh, so yeah thank you so much a pleasure being here and a privilege uh, would love to you know connect sometime in the future with most of you uh, didn't have a chance to interact much one to one but you know as we go definitely would uh, love to keep in touch you can uh, these are my contacts and uh, i think i'll hand it over back to uh, uh, sri valley yeah thank you thank you for the valuable information sir that was a great start for this adp it is an immense pleasure to have you here on this adp i request all the participants to join the next session at 11:45 thank you okay thank you and uh, have a good day thank you
गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन और अभी अभी को टू स्टार्ट Ma'am, like still fifty-five people are in. We'll wait for five minutes and okay. then we can start. I welcome you all for the next session. The second session is on startups in colleges. The speaker for this session is Dr. Divya Rajput. Dr. Divya Rajput is a highly resourceful, motivated, and enthusiastic professional with 21 years of experience in fostering innovation, managing technical operations, and as a startup business head. By qualification, she did her MSc M.Tech in Electronics. and tele telecommunication and has completed her phd in machine learning she is the ceo of jss science and technology entrepreneurs park director and co-founder of icsrp and association of women in business treasurer and co-founder of sbpi being a startup evangelist dr divya has mentored more than 600 entrepreneurs and built capacity of more than 200 incubator managers she established three, three greenfield projects in higher education and three government funded incubators raising 35 crores in grants funding she worked as a head of business innovation and it services with iica and the ministry of corporate affairs government of india and as an advisor to technology development board and i and iim lucknow 
where she initiated and curated the first innovation development program on corporate venturing. Dr. Divya was awarded the Youth Excellence Award by the Russian Cultural Center, Women Excellence Award by CMO Council, Singapore, and the American Center, New Delhi, and was nominated for an award at Women Economic Forum in 2020. She conducts innovation and entrepreneurship programs, coaching women leaders in emerging business processes and leadership roles. We thank you, ma'am, for being a part of this EDP, and I request yes. you to start the session. Uh, thank you. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. So, you know, uh, looks like some problem with my video right now. So the camera is not, uh, the camera doesn't want me to see you people or uh, other way around, maybe, you know, the, uh, the camera doesn't want you all to see me, but uh, sure, some other day, maybe. Uh, so thank you for the introduction. Thank you for having me over. Uh, it's always, you know, uh, great to interact with institutional builders. And, you know, when I say that, I mean uh, all of you. Uh, right. So uh, I hope uh, the screen is also visible to everyone. Yes, it is visible. Okay. But can you see the presentation? Because I can't see it. Yeah, now I, I can see the presentation. Achha, now, now you can see the presentation? Yes. Right. So uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity, as I said. And uh, uh, absolutely, uh, I'm sure, you know, although I had planned to be in the previous session, but, you know, Monday morning, I could not make time for it. So uh, uh, and then, you know, uh, as you would all know, uh, incubators basically run on lean staff. You know, because we always promote our entrepreneurs to be lean. So we ourselves run, run on lean teams, but very high potential teams, you know. So uh, Monday morning, a lot of stuff to do. But uh, I'm sure uh, Praveen took you around, uh, you know, as to how the startup ecosystem is evolving and how it is, you know, increasingly becoming important uh, to embrace uh, entrepreneurship and startup ecosystem, not just outside, uh, you know, uh, in corporate and academia, uh, you know, in corporate and industries, or even with MSNEs, but also at the academic institutions as well. Uh, I have, you know, uh, partly divided my uh, today's session in three parts. We'll look a little on the innovation bit of it, right? So uh, I'd like to talk to you people about, uh, you know, uh, what we do with the science and technology that we create and how you know it can actually be put to public good uh, the second uh, step i'll talk to you all about you know the startup journey so how it typically looks like and third very importantly how you can engage uh, with startups at your education institutions so you know depending on if you have a government grant or no government grant but if you have you know uh, sometimes, uh, like uh, uh, during my introduction, they've said that I will, I've been the advisor to I am Lucknow. So, you know, I am Lucknow actually constituted their own corpus uh, to start engaging with, uh, with startups, right? So there could also be possibility that, you know, your uh, management committee may realize that incubation is a great thing to be on campus. Uh, so they may invest in uh, you know, developing startups from your students or even from outside. So uh, uh, to begin with innovation, you know, and it happens to be my favorite topic, uh, I think, throughout, because not only I come from a tech background, but also, uh, you know, uh, worked with the best of the leaders and, you know, people who really embrace change and innovation. So uh, as we all are aware, and I know from, you know, the participants profile that a couple of you come from a uh, technology background and some of you come from arts and commerce background, but you all, some of you also come from the management background. So you would agree with me that, you know, any, any novel or innovative, you know, uh, or, you know, a solution which has never been there. So it could be, you know, there are various forms. We'll come to that. But then, you know, innovation is not just about technology. 
it can be product innovation or it can be even process innovation right and it mostly uh, involves research it involves you know developing organizational uh, capabilities it also uh, involves uh, financial and commercial activities but very importantly there's mostly a new technology which is involved right uh, it's revolutionary it's iterative so you know uh, uh, it undergoes a lot of lot of iterations so you mostly you know uh, you look at uh, a lot of uh, uh, times changing working on the technology taking uh, you know customer feedback improving upon the product and then maybe you know come out with an interesting uh, uh, innovation and very importantly innovation is a very serious effort so you know uh, 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 and you would also realize that you know despite being uh, employees uh, a lot of employees are actually innovative at work as well so you know you necessarily need not be a startup only to embrace innovation you can be very innovative and you know that's what most of the researchers are they are very innovative they look out for a problem a unique problem and then they try to create solutions around it let's look at the classification of innovations so uh, you know uh, if we go by the degree of novelty so innovation could be incremental in nature which means that you do better uh, what we already do right uh, it can also be systemic so you know could be new for the company or it could be radical you know so something we also call as disruptive which is new for the world uh innovations also happen at the component level so you know for example bluetooth is a great innovation so you know it it finds its adoption across devices right or it could be systemic innovation which means you know new series of cars planes computers tv mp3 uh then you know we've all seen how uh we've transitioned from one type of industrial revolution to the other type of industrial revolution right so steam engine or ict or biotech or nanotech so you know all these are part of you know various classes of innovation now comes the favorite part so this happens to be somehow my favorite part because you know uh, while science converts money into knowledge and you know that's what we all get you know we get we used to get a lot of grants from ugc to you know uh, uh, apply our sciences you know to to convert it to knowledge which we used to share by way of you know publications or by sh by way of patents or by way of you know protecting our ip and then comes the technology commercialization which converts knowledge back into money to bring value to the society so you know uh, while uh, uh, till the previous decade i would say there was a lot of focus on you know generating knowledge but now there is a lot of focus on technology commercialization and that is how you know it's important for all of us uh, to realize and understand that you know we have to you know convert the same knowledge we've acquired over years back into money and at the same time bring value to the society let's look at the innovation chain right and i am going to leave couple of these models with you and you know each of these models actually lead to the same thing so you're free to use whichever models you require to you know say go back to your uh, uh, parent institution or host institution and bring a change there right so uh, you know uh, it's the method of converting science into wealth and as you can see you know there are these technology readiness levels and i'll talk about trls in detail but then there are these technology readiness levels you know where uh, trl 1 to 3 is mostly about basic technology research trl 2 to 4 is research to prove feasibility and that's where you know till trl 4 is where academia plays a very very important role in in knowledge development then comes trl 3 to 5 which is technology demonstration right 
And then from, uh, you know, TRL 5 and 6 is technology development and prototypes. So I'm sure you've heard of, you know, a couple of these uh, maker spaces or, you know, there is also a DST scheme called PRAYAS where, uh, <clears throat> sorry, institutions can set up, uh, uh, you know, prototyping facilities in-house. So uh, coming back, you know, uh, just to repeat, when you work on, you know, TRL 1 to 9, uh, academia and government labs can play a very important role till, you know, the startup or the innovator is still there, uh, you know, till TRL 5. At least 4 is important, but then uh, 4 to 5 is very important, right? So uh, uh, talking about, you know, uh, technology development, talking about, you know, eventually uh, large businesses, you know, these are some of the actors which you require. Also, there are times when you may, you know, uh, say your your uh, innovator is creating a solution for SMEs, you know, or is creating a solution for the government. So, uh, you know, that, uh, or maybe, you know, using government funds, if I may say, you know, so these are all the actors or all the players, you know, which come handy when your innovator is working. Funding typically comes from government and private sector, but then, you know, uh, they could be, say, developing a solution for SMEs, you know. Uh, so uh, that's the time they have to start engaging with the SMEs. So if academia, uh, you feel that, you know, you have no role because you don't handle placements, uh, you know, but you have no role of, uh, you know, talking with large companies or talking with SMEs, you may like to think again, because they are going to be the users of your technology. So unless you're not engaging with the users of technology, you know, and especially if you are, uh, you know, uh, uh, at a professor level, and you are guiding innovators and researchers, you know, there, there are chances that you may miss on the very application of that technology. And then, you know, even though the technology will be developed, uh, it may not be commercialized, right? So, uh, I mean, my only request to all our esteemed academicians here is that, you know, while you utilize government funding for developing innovative solutions, please see uh, very specifically who are you making these solutions for? or your researchers or your innovators, who are they making these solutions for? And if you can seek their inputs and their feedback, you know, the chances are that the prototype which will be developed and, you know, there, there are also opportunities where these large companies can also pay for the paid proof of concept. You know, that's what even we try and do. We try and collaborate as an incubator with, uh, you know, companies which can help uh, our startups to do paid proof of concept. Because, you know, if the solution is of use to an industry, there are chances that our startups will actually get their first client, you know. So uh, that's where, you know, academia also has to engage. So even if you are, you know, uh, not creating startups, uh, but only creating technology, Trust me, uh, you know, you really need to start engaging with SMEs and large businesses. So it's not going to be only about funding. It's going to be, uh, you know, beyond funding now. So where is your technology going to be uh, used for public good? Uh, this is another example. And, you know, this is a very interesting book by VK Jolly. And uh, you can refer to this uh, book, uh, you know, which talks about uh, the commercialization model. So, you know, what kind of uh, tools are required? So as you can see on the top, you know, when uh, uh, when the te uh, technical assessment is required, that is the time when it is mostly in ideation or incubation space, right? And, uh, you know, uh, thereafter, uh, the startups or the innovator would require a feasibility study. And that's when, you know, the demonstration, typical demonstration uh, or promotions start to happen. And that's where, you know, uh, marketing elements start to take over. And then comes the business plan. So that's when, you know, basically you start to uh, 
get into the business mode of it. So you know that your technology is validated. You know that your solution is a never before solution. You also know that this never before solution can actually change, you know, life for good. And that's the time you need to convert it to a business. So uh, this is another interesting book you may like to refer to, uh, which is by uh, Dr. V.K. Jolly. Right, so time for a quick exercise because, uh, you know, monologues don't help. I'm sure you'll start logging off if I don't start to listen to you. So uh, let's do a quick small exercise here, which is on technology description. So what is a technology description? Technology description is the means to communicate the existence of your product to customers and how to refer to it. So what you do is you name it and you frame it. For example, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is LinkedIn? Say LinkedIn is a great, uh, you know, it's a professional network to connect to professionals. So, or, you know, you can say LinkedIn is a network to connect to professionals, the social network to connecting to professionals. So that's the frame of, uh, so everybody understands, you know, the frame uh, that it's a social network. However, how it is differentiated? Because it is connecting you to professionals. So uh, we'll take five minutes here, and you can also use it as a bio break in case you want. So we'll resume the session in five minutes. What I want you to do is clearly explain what your technology does and what problem they can solve by using it. So you have to answer the what and not the how. Right. And I'm presuming each one of you has a technology to credit. All of those who come from management or science or arts, back, uh, sorry, from arts or uh, management background or commerce background, uh, you know, you may like to think of a product or service. Right. Don't worry about a technology if you've not thought of a technology. If you can think of a technology, great. But then, uh, you know, uh, uh, think of a product or service. Think of a business model. And just let us know in one quick minute, you know, you so you have to think of a name for your technology or your product or service, and you have to put it in a frame and specifically just tell us about the what and not the how, right? So uh, we take a quick break here. Yeah, please start working on your technology description, name it and frame it. So you can call it a business description in case you haven't thought of a technology.
Okay. So can we just go around the table, uh, all the participants, if you're ready? With the technology description. Uh, so the host of the meeting, could you please help me identify the participants? Because I can see a lot of people, but I don't know how many of them are participants. Participants. Participants, please post your answers on the chat box. Um, actually, there are like more than 100 odd participants. I know, I can see that, but that's okay. At least somebody has to start talking. Okay, okay. Yeah, Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, I was just thinking about CRED, how, uh, what if does, it is a payment mechanism. So this is only I could uh, thought of in the context of what? Right. So uh, Abhimanyu, do you, have you ever thought of a, a technology or an innovative solution for if someday you have to come out and, you know, uh, create one? Any thoughts about it? Mom, sometimes I have, uh, uh, there are some ideas, but it, uh, I haven't uh, thought about the commercialization of the ideas. Like in the morning, I was thinking about something like uh, we all uh, go through PDS. We are facing some challenges to convert our PDS into uh, some other sort of document files. Mm -hmm. How it could be addressed in a more efficient manner. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about that particular aspect of the things. Mm -hmm. But uh, if uh, if I see as an individual, is it worth to giving it even a try? So that is the whole question mark where an idea comes to an end for me. Right. Interesting. Thank you for saying that. So uh, anytime you feel you're ready, you can always reach out, connect me on LinkedIn and we can discuss again. Sure. Right. Thanks. So, uh, but am I audible? Venki says I'm not audible. Ma'am, you're audible now. Right, thank you. Okay, so Koshik, uh, you have a product called Wholesome Eaten. Uh, do you want to talk about it, Koshik? Certainly, ma'am. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Okay. Yeah, so this product called Wholesome Eat and uh, basically addresses the right way of approaching diet and food. Mm -hmm. And uh, as desired by the customer, it tries to solve the weight loss or weight gain problem, you know, just by doing the basic math. Right. And uh, in doing so, it also addresses the micronutrient issues, which becomes a huge problem uh, as you reduce or increase your intake. Sure. And uh, by doing this entire thing, uh, it saves you from the overthinking part about the diet and yet uh, lets you reach your goal. Right. So, uh, Kaushik, if you have to, uh, you know, give a top technology description, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and it has to be, say, a single liner okay. or a single high, high, uh, you know, uh, high level uh, single sentence, what it would be. So can you name your product and put it in a uh, technology? Uh, sorry, put it in a frame. Is it a dietary supplement? 
uh it's not a dietary supplement it's okay. more of a service uh think of it like an application uh it's a application but then it's not a product it's a service yeah it's a service yes you're it's right. a service yeah. okay so yeah. i'm sorry but throughout you know i was thinking that it's a product so you know like we get uh, some high protein dietary uh, ladoos for example yeah but yeah yeah you say it's so, a service yeah. Ha, huh, it's a service. Okay. Hmm. Yes, it's a service. Yes. Right. Interesting. So, uh, uh, could you now again put it in a frame? Uh, <laughs> when you said a minute, ma'am, I thought uh, this would be a good explanation. But uh, put it in a frame. Uh, if you want me to put it in one sentence, uh, uh -huh. I would just go back to my uh, drawing board. very initial statement that says addresses the right way of approaching diet and food sure so it's an application which helps you approach a uh, diet and food yeah the right way uh, right way with, of approaching with, diet and food yeah without compromising on the you know whatever side effects you face or what not but then but then koshik hey we are not able to understand the what of it so like when you told me that you know you talked about what so you know when you talked about what uh, and you said it's an application that was the time i started to understand that it's a service it's not a product okay yeah so you know uh, what you can actually say is that it's an application uh, that helps you uh, approach diet and food in the right manner does that work yes makes sense yeah yeah okay thank you so you know one thing uh, what we also do when we do this exercise is we also try and understand uh, you know the logical right ways of you know putting our words uh, or our argument in so little words so that it makes sense you know because we don't know what background is the other person coming from and that happens you know uh, uh, whether you pitching before a jury or your startup is pitching before a jury so you have to actually tell them in so little words such that you know they can easily understand despite uh, you know any background they are coming from uh, abhimanyu navin uh, you've raised your hands please go ahead ma'am uh, can you give an example of a famous startup and you can describe its what and uh, the whole exercise on that particular startup sure so uh, you all know of uber yes ma'am what does uber do uh, it is a mechanism by which it links the uh, service providers and the who are seeking the rights okay so uh, can i say it's a cab sharing platform yes ma'am three words so this is the what of uh, the startup yeah exactly technology. this is the what of a startup it doesn't tell you how it does it so you know they have algorithms at the back end all of that is fine right so you know but then technology description is just the what of it so as little words putting it in the most commonly known terminology so um, when i was uh, talking about the cred uh, startup uh, so uh, my description of it it is a payment mechanism was it right is it a payment mechanism like credit card payment we can do by ha so that is a so it's not a payment mechanism you can do a credit card payment using cred okay yeah like okay let's go back to paytm okay so what is paytm so um it's a payment mechanism it's a payment wallet it's a digital wallet actually okay ma'am so the moment we put it in a wallet frame we all understand what the wallet yes ma'am yeah and the moment i say it's a digital wallet i know that i can maintain digital money in this wallet yes right so yes, so so that's yeah that's the uh, frame so you know uh, and as i said frames are interesting so like i gave first example of linkedin and even i was fumbling when i was trying to frame it you know so linkedin is uh, a social network for for professionals as simple 
the moment you talk about social network, we all understand what is a social network too, right? So, you know, it will be mostly hosted on cloud and then people can connect from wherever. The moment I say professionals, I understand, you know, under what uh, specific segments, a segment of people is it operating for. So that's what we do. So right? uh, as yeah. far as I understood it, Frame is a way of putting the what of the technology to the intended customers or the investors. Actually, anybody, Abhimanyu, you're right. Actually, anybody, you know, so if you're talking to a, a friend, you know, who doesn't come from your background, but, you know, maybe a neighbor who could be a great potential investor, right? And you're talking to your neighbor, uh, you know, a great guy has a lot of money. And, you know, you can actually talk to this uh, uh, neighbor and tell the neighbor that, uh, you know, uh, hey, this is what my business is. So if they understand what your business is, they will maybe someday consider staying with you on that. Right. Or it could be anybody you rightly said could be, you know, investor could be a stakeholder, could be even a bank manager, anybody. So, you know, people have to very specifically understand what you're doing. And these common branding terms is what people have already started to understand. Right. So it's always good to create a technology description of your uh, technology or business or innovation. Uh, Naveen, please go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I want to, to uh, talk about a product I thought about idea, product idea. Right. Uh, it is about a swappable battery technology mm -hmm. where we can provide electric vehicle users with hazard free time saving and efficient charging experience and what yes, it is a modular okay. battery technology where, sure. uh, where it is called mm. sure so uh, what kind of vehicle yes, are you talking about uh, so is it a e-rickshaw or mm. some other vehicle uh, it is cross compatible man. we can use in any vehicle kind of it is shaped into it i am thinking about shaping it in kind of a brick shape uh, where manufacturers can use in any kind of vehicles, like standardizing batteries, man. we can use double Achha. batteries in any remotes or any vehicles, any mm -hmm. remote vehicles and all. Right. So, uh, in such a way that I want to standardize batteries to electric vehicles. Sir. Okay. So yes. can you can you say that it is uh, yes, a battery sir. battery swapping uh, mechanism? I mean, is it a mechanism or a system or a uh, or an aggregator? I mean, what is it going to be? Is it going to be a service or new technology i mean what is it going to be according to you it is both the kind of uh, it is an existing technology only ma'am already ev lithium ion batteries are present in market i am right. creating new business model uh, where we can okay. create swapping okay. stations and we can franchise the stations like petrol works and all. right so you're creating a battery swapping infrastructure yes ma'am okay so uh, you can always say that, you know, uh, my solution is a battery swapping in, uh, you know, a station or an infrastructure. I mean, if it is more than a station, you can use bigger term. But if it is just, uh, you know, a station, you can absolutely say that, that my solution is a battery swapping station, uh, you know, for EVs. Simple. Yes. Yes, yeah. So, so and uh, actually, you know, actually we also yeah. manufacture batteries, so that mm -hmm. it is a B two B market type of thing. Sure, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so that we can supply our batteries as OEMs to startups and all that sort of. Right. Interesting. No, but then, uh, do you want to focus on battery, or you want to focus uh, on uh, this mechanism? Uh, it is a total total package, man. Both battery and uh, mechanism, mechanism with the infrastructure also. We can franchise mm -hmm. the infrastructure, like stations and all, and mm -hmm. we can manufacture the batteries and produce to and uh, supply to startups, EV startups and EV companies. Right. Okay. But then uh, maybe I think uh, what we'll do is someday other uh, you know get into the detail of it. But I think. Uh, uh, you, you quite understand what we are talking about. So thank you for doing yes. that. Okay, so I'll just read from the chat yes, box yes, 
yeah i'll just okay. uh, read you. from the chat box now uh anybody else has any other uh, technology description they'd like to share anybody else wants to talk about their technology or business description Naveen and Abhimanyu. Naveen, go ahead. Ma'am, uh, my doubt is all complete. Okay, okay. Abhimanyu, do you have a query? Yes, ma'am, I have a query. Ma'am, uh, how do we commercialize a uh, process uh, innovation? in a in context of technology we can always there are different levels we can always seek out at which level the technology has been upgraded but how we assess the process uh, innovation uh i quite don't uh, you know uh, know what details you'd like to uh, know about but you uh, you know depends on how you want to provide that uh, i mean service or that process to people outside i mean one we have to know who's your customer two we have to also uh, know uh, what mechanisms work in your industry you know so what are the commonly accepted uh, terminologies which are used and what specific industry or you know a uh, uh, group are you talking about ma'am uh, if i have to take an example uh, suppose there is a product a we mm -hmm. can always seek at what level the product has been uh, reached when we are uh, making it from the prototype till the date it's finally commercialized on the right. other hand there is a logistic uh, logistics we are uh, helping the uh, we are helping the logistic department to how the logistics can be better managed mm -hmm. by any uh, process innovation so mm -hmm. in the product category we can see how the product has been developed but in the process innovation what are our parameters to see is evolution hmm. or the incremental change by which it has been a uh, daily there is uh, an upward change in it right so what you have to do abhimanyu is you have to map first uh, all the features okay you have to map the features and when you map the features in fact uh, that's going to be my next slide right so uh, when you map the features you start to understand that you know how are your features better than the existing solutions okay uh, when i say features it could be anything to everything and it could also be you know how is uh, your technology uh, more affordable or how is it that your technology is more efficient or how is it more convenient or adding to the convenience you know So you have to actually compare the features you have to keep a reference point compare it with the features and then you know come out with the outcome that what are the uh, you know uh, benefits which will come to the customers so uh, let me come to the slide and i think uh, you'll understand what i'm trying to tell you okay sure. yeah thank you binavan new so there is a question uh, which is that how to build an idea into a deliverable service model and requirements okay so you know the steps remain more or less the same uh, you you take an idea uh you think of a product or service around it you start to work on the features of uh, this product or service you look at what benefits are going to come and then you know you start to identify uh, the technical specifications and you start working on you know uh, what will customer pay for right but before that you also go out and uh, you know seek feedback before you you know start to commercialize your solution so it's important to take a feedback so that you know you don't spend all of your money without understanding the customer needs right uh 
I hope that was useful, Ramesh ji. Yeah, thank you. Uh, anybody else wants to discuss uh, their uh, technology or business description? I mean, any thoughts you have? Right. OK, so otherwise, we'll just continue. I hope you can see the screen. Yes, ma'am, we can yes, see ma the screen. Right, thank you so much. OK, so uh, this happens to be one of my favorite slides. Because it talks to you about, you know, how you can bring value to the customer. So uh, there are benefits, you know, and benefits is the way to solve a customer problem and the advantage the product will bring. It could be, you know, measured as performance. It is normally physical uh, benefit, could be cost benefit could be you know a benefit to the environment or to the product life cycle benefit you know uh, how are we increasing the product life cycle even that could be a benefit right features are you know what it does how it is made and what it is so you know very specifically uh, for example you know we all use a lunch box just giving example of a lunch box so, you know, there are various type of lunch boxes. So there is one which has a little insulation. Then there is one which has, uh, you know, an electric cord and you can actually heat your food. Then there's another one uh, which is plain, you know, steel tiffin. Then there are plastic tiffins and all of that, all these lunch boxes. Now, uh, if you have to start to, you know, uh, create differentiation among the various type of lunch boxes, what you start to do is you start to look at the features. OK, see, the benefit could be that if it has insulation, it might keep the food warm. But then, you know, if you're using the one with the cord, the benefit it will bring to the table is that it will actually, you know, not just uh, uh, keep the food warm, but it can, you know, you can plug it in and you can even warm the food further. And a plain, you know, simple uh, lunchbox, which is cheap and, you know, uh, easy to carry, it's lighter in weight, is the one where you can actually, you know, keep or use it for cold food. So, you know, each of, although it's it just looks to you like a lunchbox, but each of these lunchboxes have different features. And therefore, they bring different benefit to the customer. So anybody who purchases a lunchbox, so, you know, a specific category of lunchbox, say without insulation, so uh, something without insulation, maybe you can carry fruit or you can carry, you know, sandwiches, something you don't need to keep warm. But if you want to carry warm food, you may like to look at a lunchbox with insulation or you may like to look at, you know, a lunchbox, uh, which can, as I said, it could heat your food also. Right. So uh, that's features. You know, it is the technical detail of what the innovation does. Right. And trust me, you may think that, you know, lunchbox me kya hai. It's the, you know, uh, uh, simplest of the example. But imagine how important it is because everybody who works try and carry their lunchboxes. I mean, we are yet not America that will buy a lunch from outside. So, you know, even if you can come out with an amazing, uh, you know, design of a lunchbox, uh, you know, something which can appeal to everybody, it's a great innovation. You know, so there could be people, you know, who carry it themselves. There could be people who can keep it in a car or there could be, so, you know, all of this completely depends on the type of customer or the customer persona, as we say. So those segment of customers, we want to sell it to. So somebody, you know, uh, who wants to keep it in a car can actually keep one the case also, but somebody who has to carry it in, you know, a local conveyance would like it to be lighter in weight as well as spill proof. So the uh, different has to be spill proof. So, you know, it has to be vacuum packed and convenient as well. 
So that's that's how much you know every single product is important. So you have to understand every technical detail of you know a simple product which you want to develop. Now, what are the technical specifications? So technical specifications actually, you know, relay a specific benefit and value so that the customer pays for it. Coming back to the lunchbox, the size of the lunchbox, you know, mentions, well, that's one of the technical specification. If, you know, it has a cord which can help you to warm the food, then, you know, that cord has to be compatible with the normal, uh, you know, uh, power cords you know, 220 volts, it has to be compatible, right? Uh, then, you know, it should not be uh, so much powerful that it burns the food. So, you know, optimally, say for half an hour or 20 minutes, somebody plugs in and, you know, it warms the food. So it must also reflect the technology innovation to distinguish or explain product specs. So what are the product specifications, you know? Uh, that's something what uh, people understand. Like, why would you buy, you know, a, a phone? A, a mobile is a mobile, you know, but why would you go and buy a very costly mobile phone? Oh, because of the technical specifications. You know, you know, it's got a quad camera. You know that, you know, it's got a good cache. You've, uh, it's got a good, you know, uh, uh, memory, the features. The OS, then, you know, also uh, how easy is it to get it, uh, you know, repaired in case there is a damage. So all these are technical specifications, you know, eventually. And then, you know, uh, something we give to the customer is called value. Value is what a customer gets in form of benefits, right, in return of the money being paid. So, you know, customer pays you money. Customer pays money to a startup or an innovator or to a business or to a company. You know, that's what the customer does. But what does the customer expect back? Customer doesn't purchase only the product. Customers purchase the benefits they get, you know, for the product they are purchasing. So it's about the benefits they get. So whenever you think, you know, uh, uh, about creating or developing a new product or technology or business model. Think from the customer's angle. Start thinking, and you know, this is something we do uh, in detail. It's a whole process called design thinking, right? Where you actually start to think from the customer's perspective, you know, solving that need which the customer may have, right? Okay, so coming to startups now, and you know, this is my second part of uh, today's session, uh, where we look at, you know, uh, the various journey of startups. So, uh, but let's look at carefully what a startup is. You know, a startup is a temporary organization designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model. One thing, you know, you must notice in this uh, definition is startup is, you know, not permanent. You cannot remain a startup forever, right? Also, it is designed to search for a repeatable. So, you know, how you can get repeat customers, right? And scalable, which means you can work across geographies, you can work across with so many teams, you know? So, if you are creating a business, you know, where is your repeat revenues going to come and how much you know you can deploy technology to scale up your presence across the globe or maybe even outside that's what a startup is right it's a simple definition very simple but you cannot remain a startup forever you have to find that you know uh, repeatable innovative scalable business model you have to do that okay there are Typically, six types of startups. There are lifestyle startups. So, you know, uh, people could be self-employed, working for no one but themselves. And it's okay, you know, it's okay to be a lifestyle startup. So you need not look at, you know, too much of scale, but you may build a model which, you know, people can come back and purchase from you again and again. 
so you know there are a lot of people freelancers for example who do or who run digital marketing companies or digital marketing advisory right so these are lifestyle startups you know uh, people who want to work for themselves and they have that special skill set which they know has been converted to a venture or could be converted to a venture right second comes the small business startups so small businesses that run their own business to feed the family and again you know nothing wrong about it so you could also be a small business startup you know, all the all the people that you see around so you know when we talk about smes the you know small and medium enterprises they're small you know so there are micro as well so people who you know typically employ under 10 people that's okay you know a lot of people do that and mostly these startups actually grow organically you know they uh, if they need funding it's typically bank funding comes in debt form so you know they don't receive that kind of equity funding and it's okay then comes the scalable startups so you know which always search for a repeatable and scalable business model so that's what you know uh, if you look carefully is uber for example or that's what could be paytm so you know, people keep coming back to use the wallet and always keep paying those transaction costs so yes then there are viable startups so uh, you know uh, some startups build a great product great model only to be sold to a larger company for cash which is okay whatsapp has been sold you know so uh, even uh, white hat junior was sold to byju's last year so nothing wrong about it you know they they put their uh, uh, 110% during that much time take it to the peak and you know uh, build that great revenue model or business model and then you know they can be sold to a larger company for cash and it's okay to be a viable startup as well right and then there are large company startups right so they innovate or they are uh, forced to die to you know or die forced you know to create new innovative products so they always keep innovating right so there are these large company startups as well right and you know uh, uh, if you carefully see the evolution of most of the startups in india be it the flipkart or you know uh, uh, be it oyo rooms for that matter you know they they all started with a single or maybe uh, you know a different business model and eventually pivoted so you know they eventually changed their track they looked at uh, other more lucrative segments and they created some more innovative products to stay you know competitive in business and there is another category of startups you know uh, which we are seeing a lot emerging is the social startups so they are more passionate and driven to make an impact so you know it's mostly an impact which can be measured in form of social or environmental uh, chain so you know they want to bring a social change they want to help people they want to you know then there are uh, you know startups which are working in sustainable businesses clean technologies so you know working with farmers utilizing technology to work with farmers and others marginalized sectors so you know these are social startups in fact you know uh, we are actually seeing almost 50% of startups coming to us nowadays come coming as social startups so you know if they are a social for profit startup so you know uh, of course their growth is a little different but still you know they have to always look at creating an impact more than you know creating revenues or creating you know uh, profitability not revenues yeah revenues are important for sustenance but then uh, you know i would say creating profits so uh, almost 50% as i said uh, we meet social startups nowadays right uh, so that's what ravi actually asked me to do uh, talk about the startup life cycle from ideation to growth and as you can see it's a very very simple uh, life cycle it starts typically with an idea uh, goes through planning so while you know they are planning they happen to have or meet lot of mentors 
and then you know these mentors uh, also uh, help them strategize you know strategize for growth or strategize according to their uh, you know uh, i would say uh, uh, strategy to grow their business so you know in case they want to sell the business uh, then you create a sellable startup right so that's all you know strategic interventions that we require and then you know they market themselves so that uh, you know the product and services marketed very strongly so that you know they can create that much noise and they can get some paid customers uh then comes finance you know uh financial requirements are mostly met by you know uh, if if you talk about uh, government programs it's basically in the form of grants or you know financial uh, support is also being provided by banks uh, and financial support is also being provided by you know uh, early stage investors uh, in fact we have our own seed fund which we deploy in companies in fact i have a seed fund committee meeting uh, starting in just you know next two hours so you know we're looking at investing into startup companies one in travel tech domain and another in health tech domain right so you know finances come from and as of today as they say you know if you have a great idea and a great innovation and a great you know uh, uh, method of creating impact uh, funding is not a big constraint in fact most of our startups i mean i would say when i say most of them i mean almost 50% of them actually you know raise external funding after you know even after we have invested in them then comes you know the realization which is you know they see the growth trajectory and you know uh, they see some success you know however you know one word of caution if you want to become an entrepreneur only to you know or uh, and this is something you know you can take back to your entrepreneurs or to take back to your students uh, that if they want to become an entrepreneur only so that they can raise funding then it is not going to happen so you know funding uh, is actually or financing external financing is actually uh, you know uh, it happens after careful planning it is uh, an outcome and you can't start with funding so i'm sure uh, you will meet or you have been meeting couple of these uh, entrepreneurs who just come to you with an idea and say ki you know funding dilwa dijiye so you know which is you know get us the funding so you have to only tell them that it doesn't work like that and that's why you know uh, we need so many engagement models uh between academic institutions and students so that they understand that you know just like placements don't happen just because you've enrolled in a program you don't become an uh, you know entrepreneur and don't raise funds only if you know uh, uh you have decided to become an entrepreneur so it's not it doesn't work like that right so uh it's tricky but then that's how it is so it's typically you know uh, if i may say it's typically about you know 2 to 3 years of cycle uh, that you may start to see some finance coming your way uh so you know talking a little more in detail uh the first step as i said is idea and as you can see you know uh, that's uh, from time zero it's actually in negative you know it's minus 1 and minus 2 that's the formation stage you know so idea is just the formation stage so there is a mission to make a change there is a vision and there is strategy so you know it is it starts with an idea and then there are co-founders and there are teams so you know what to whom why and how you know that's what you start answering and what you do is you look at creating a problem a problem solution fit so you look at you know ideating you look uh, look at concepting and then comes the validation stage you know that's where we suggest uh, you know startup should remain lean because you're still validating you don't need a lot of team members you know so you create a minimum viable product as well as you know also look at validating or iterating so as i said you know validation means you start taking feedback that is it 
you know, right technical specification? Is it going to bring the right impact? Is it going to bring the right benefits with the customer desires? Okay. And then you also look at committing and validating, right? So you start to create a product market fit, as we call it. So as you can see, the different level of validations and, you know, uh, uh, first is the problem solution fit that, you know, you've clearly rightly identified the problem you want to solve, right? And the solution you're thinking is the right solution. And after that, you come on a point zero, you know, so on the timeline, you come on point zero where you start to look at a vision and founders fit. So, you know, uh, one thing we always tell our entrepreneurs is that it's uh, maturely you know the philosophy of a founder or philosophy of an entrepreneur right which uh, eventually becomes the mission and vision of the company it's not the other way around the company doesn't come first actually the founders come first you know it's the founders philosophy so say for example if the founder is very uh, i would say if the founder is very uh, uh High, high on integrity, you know, so the founder would always try and, you know, create that kind of uh, integral model in the business as well. So, you know, they like not to cheat service, uh, sorry, their customers, they like to offer the best uh, solution, all of that, you know, so it mostly, you know, the vision of the company is, it comes from the philosophy of the founders, that that's why it's important to establish that fit. And then comes, you know, the product market fit, as I said, you know, so that's when you start to validate, right? So if you, uh, you know, see from where we started, we actually started with technology readiness levels that I assume that, you know, most of our, my academic friends would understand well. But then now we are coming to the startup definitions. So these are some of the terminologies the startup use on a day in day out basis, right? And then comes the growth or the scale up. Right. So that's when you start to look at, you know, the business model and market fit. So, you know, the, is it a paid business model? Is it subscription based? You know, so how how is the startup going to make money? Is the business model as simple? You know, so where is money going to come in and where is it going to go out? So, you know, they need to identify all their costs and they need to identify how much money should they be charging. And, you know, if it is techno commercially feasible or not. So like I gave example of the Iridium satellite phone, I mean, it was, you know, not only inconvenient, but then, you know, the costing which uh, at which it was being sold, it was also not commercially feasible. So you have to also, you know, the startups also have to look at the business model or market fit part of it. And then eventually, you know, establish and strengthen uh, the business processes and KPIs, right? And, you know, as you see on the bottom, you know, it says uh, it's a transition, you know, from talent to organization. So while it could be, you know, the talent of that one founder or two founders who've come together, eventually, you know, what they set up is organizations. You know, they establish organization they, and then they can attract finance. They can get the right people resources. So it's a lot of careful planning as I may say, you know, which helps uh, startups to, uh, you know, take from ideation to, you know, creating those or establishing those great organizations, right? Okay, my favorite slide, let's look at how, you know, uh, academia can support student entrepreneurship engagement on campus. So, uh, uh, you know, it starts with mostly starts with an e-cell or an innovation cell on your campus and i'm sure you know most of you who come from academic uh, institutions would already have an e-cell or an innovation cell uh, i've also given you know uh, what kind of events you can organize so you can organize some workshops you can also organize some entrepreneur talks you can organize boot camps you can also organize idea challenges or hackathons right Anybody has a question? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, I am Professor Patnaik from uh, uh, Lankapalla Bullaya College, Visakhapatnam. Good afternoon, uh, sir. 
uh, actually uh, we are facing a big task regarding you know inculcating the entrepreneurship culture among students in the colleges right sir uh, mainly in northern uh, districts of andhra pradesh mm mm-hmm. uh, as you said just now that you know we opened a cell established a cell that is isk we call that is entrepreneurship in a way to start up cell mm mm-hmm. mm uh, uh it has been about 3 months or so and we have been working on that right so. but uh, uh, you know tangible uh, positive response from students mom i mean mostly even we interacted with the parents also actually opened a whatsapp mm-hmm. group interacting with students and conducting some you know guest lectures and all we have been doing even the uh, despite uh, present uh, corona wave or whatever it may be with all protocol observing right sir but uh, uh, and uh, recently you no know, apsc or uh, qsc from uh, um, from andhra pradesh government right uh, they opened uh, one um, cell also in imv some boot camp and all Mm-hmm. Uh, all those measures uh, we are taking but uh, hardly you know we are finding any positive response from students you know all are interested for in some sort of job some 3 to 4 lakhs package and all uh, that is the content uh, what we are facing with the students mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. even even in right. engineering colleges oh how that's okay it, uh, how that's to break okay. it is a ground level reality ma'am it's no no i agree level. i agree sir so you know yeah. uh, see i have been part of higher education since year 2000 yeah in fact i started my career as a lecturer only right okay okay so yeah so it was only 2007 mm-hmm. uh, you know that i got an independent charge of heading a business school mm-hmm. uh, that was the time you know uh, because it was a business school i introduced mandatory training on entrepreneurship in fact okay. i'll come to that yeah so oh, when oh. why why i made it mandatory i mm-hmm. uh, because i thought that you know there is that one convergence point mm-hmm. where all the subjects of management mm-hmm. can be applied by students because what right. happens sir if they go for a job you mm-hmm. know they, they can get a job in say marketing or they'll get a job in hr or they'll get a job in finance but mm-hmm. you know, no company will give them how to create a hr strategy or how to create a marketing strategy okay. and you know uh, also uh, maybe by the time they so they first join as a executive then they join as you know so it, it's a long time you're right uh so uh, what i want to tell you here is sir i actually trained that time 5 years i was the head of this business school had trained, you been successful ma'am so that's what i'm coming to sir so <laughs> okay. i i i trained 1400 students sir on okay. entrepreneurship okay. both okay. mba bba combined and awesome. we used to yeah so we used to teach them uh, entrepreneurship in first semester itself okay okay so not yeah not let it go till the third semester when they start to worry about placements okay and, and we started to give it as a credit course Oh, okay. Add on, add on. So the moment we give it a credit point, they start to take it little seriously. See, sir, one fact is that our students are, you know, they they are worried about exams. They are worried about schools. Mm, absolutely. And that's been there since ever. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, however, uh, you know, acha. Then uh, the other thing we allowed them to do was we allowed them to also set up campus companies. like for yeah. example you know my students who were coming from say a uh, uh, bba if mm-hmm. they wanted to set up a salad bar you know so we gave them space in the cafeteria itself okay, okay. so we did not have we did not tell them to go because you know i was sir in a uh, industrial property so that was industrial area where my business school okay, was established okay okay so okay so we we did not have we did not have sir acres of campus so we have space to set up an incubator It's so really but good. then i always knew that you know we can find space so for mm-hmm. example there was another uh, another mba uh, student who wanted to set up a printing shop mhm so you know uh, because uh, mba students have to get a lot of reports done and presentations and they would like to get it printed okay, okay, so okay. he he came to me he asked for space so i put him next to the photoshop guy photo yeah. sorry in uh, sorry the photocopier guy yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. yeah so what i'm trying to tell you is sir that when you know and it took us time sir so uh, because mostly the moment you know and it's a full cartel sir 
So when they come for MBA, now they're told that the moment you get admission in a MBA program, you're already a manager. Right. Now, why would somebody like to dirty their hands and become an entrepreneur? You're right. So, but then when we started exposing them and we started to conduct these entrepreneur talks, especially mm-hmm. also looking at you know, and uh, I'm sure you know. So for me, it was a new business school, but I'm sure for you, you have. Uh, you know, alumni who not immediately but eventually went on to become entrepreneurs. Yeah, hopefully. So, yeah, yeah. So, sir, we have to look at those role models also who can come and talk to them. Yeah. And uh, you know, I will tell you, sir, this was a you know big big investment from our side because we had to hire a you know we hired a guest faculty who was an entrepreneur himself who used to come and conduct these sessions. Then we also took. Membership of some organizations. We did. Who we did. did. Ma'am, we did, ma'am. ma'am. We sorry to yeah. interrupt. And yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, sir, uh, I was, as I said, you know, we we did it for five years, and if you would believe me, sir, out of fourteen hundred, not more than fourteen became entrepreneurs. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. So, but then, uh, what started to happen later? Uh, mm. So we, yeah, so they 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 used to get reasonable placement, go out, get job because uh, for students also, some of them come on education loans, some of them have other practical challenges. Parents mm. want them to get a job, absolutely. And it's always, it, sir, it's always fancy to get a job. I mean, why should I not get a job? <laughs> so you and I are also on job. Yeah, the simple so way of then, uh, life uh, leading. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. sir. So or yeah. Yeah, matlab, let's accept it. No. So, yeah. but then as an investment, I'm telling you that, mm. uh, you know, uh, we, we kept tracking them yeah, and uh, mm. not, not immediately, sir, uh, but mm. after spending four or five years in uh, uh, corporate, mm. so, you know, selling credit card, mm. uh, working in, uh, uh, you know, some, one of them actually worked in Religare analytics also, somebody worked at research companies, KPMG and mm. all of that also. Mm. Uh, I know for a fact, sir, that at least now from those 14, the number is up. Oh, good. And I mm. know, yeah. And I also know, sir, that it is, uh, you know, not too up. But at least, sir, uh, uh, you know, if it was, uh, say, uh, uh, you know, 0.1% earlier, now it is at least 5%. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Ha, ha, ha. So what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is, sir, it was a, it was a conscious investment. Mm. And I'm again repeating, and this is for everybody who's listening. Mm. Uh, it may not give you results today, yeah, right. but, mm, it yeah. will, but it will at least allow them to think creatively, even in the employment. Mm. So don't look at as if they have to take entrepreneurship training only to start a new venture. They can also take up in a entrepreneurship training to be, you know, uh, entrepreneur. So mm. be a great. Uh, you know, employee asset to the company they are working in. Mm. And mm. God forbid something happens. So, you know, they lose a job. Like last year, COVID, a lot of people lost the jobs. Right. That time, that time, this entrepreneurship training will not go waste. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah mm. my, sir, my request for all the colleges and, you know, universities which are part of today's FTP, mm. kindly look at this as a long term investment. Mm. And, uh, you know, even at JSS uh, Academy of Technical Ed- Education here, sir, we don't we don't get a lot of our own students to become entrepreneurs at the incubator. Oh, so mm. they, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, we do, uh, in fact, now that uh, I'm here, so, you know, I just recently joined them. We mm. will start to engage with the students. So, you know, I've been talking to other HODs about uh, how we can conduct some uh, idea challenges, how we can look at prize money. Mm. I'm also trying to set up, you know, uh, an exhibition space where, uh, you know, their prototypes can they, be kept. Yeah, yeah, their product can be exhibited. Exactly. And right. Mm. And then there could be some awards, you know, given to them. So they are yeah. trying to motivate them in best form. It's but really a challenging yeah. job. It's a challenging oh, it's job. A, it's a lot of work. So it's a full time yeah. work. So one, oh. uh, one, please uh, put a coordinator uh, yeah. in your uh, campus to do that all the time, absolutely. because you may not have hundred percent time. All I mean to you know contribute yeah. towards entrepreneurship. <laughs> absolutely, huh? absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. if possible, uh, so uh, sir, let me uh, complete these other aspects of engagement. 
but mm-hmm. if possible i think and wherever you are independent university mm-hmm. you may do that you know a credit program oh yeah and uh, let this let this credit program like you remember sir sometime back we used to have these uh, you know sessions on life skill also no you know ma'am sorry i will uh, open this dialogue with our uh, you know incubation cell ceo our uh, ravi swarupur who is right. now organizing this right uh, so um, we will infuse uh, you know these ideas uh, with him actually right. is my friend of mine right. so i right. just said that credit uh, system you know because you know students should be attracted you know academically also it will help them means naturally exactly. will, yeah it will exactly, incline sir. Yeah. Yeah. I know, and you know, we just don't get uh, 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 startup companies to interact with them. We also get yeah, that also, know, that also, that exactly. also. Exactly, we we yeah. look at uh, entrepreneurship, sir, as a way of out of box thinking. We look yeah. at innovation, in fact. Mm-hmm. So you know, uh, innovation. If they are innovative, I think that is something which will help them always think out of the box. It will also help them, you know, yeah. uh, be better at risk management in life also. yeah absolutely it should be part of right. uh, you know right. academic uh, uh, activity also i mean uh, that should come from absolutely university. so absolutely uh, that uh, exactly. in, in, yeah from beginning itself not that uh, third year or uh, final year and all maybe in beginning itself as you said exactly. rightly sir, you are independent uh, sir, because don't, mm. yeah don't do it in the third year sir it, they are <laughs> they are very different <laughs> because they made up their minds by that time and all you see they are lot of obligations and all. so it should be part of curriculum as you said rightly you should find ways and means how to infuse it you know in their minds as a academic interest so that you know their minds right, they will tend towards entrepreneurship and all and some incentives you know exactly. some and awards you know, sir uh, my my hmm. only request is just like you know they may not uh, uh, see engineering so many years we used to teach maths in first year again hmm. right hmm. or whether whether anybody is using algebra or in uh, you know but still yeah. mm. but still we taught still, it still. so sir <laughs> how we still teach it right yeah, they, they, so why can't we why can't we teach entrepreneurship also sir yeah it should be we part of it like an investment part, exactly sir just invest yeah, it in them and forget about it yes sir yeah, yeah, so you yeah. know even if after and sir i'll tell you one thing and i can mm. tell you with great confidence Uh, mm. see because i've worked in corporate affairs also so i used to mm. get a lot of uh, you know people from corporate actually to come and come and talk med- mm. yeah come yeah. and talk yeah. to me about uh, yeah. entrepreneurship so you know i'm talking about the likes of say cto of hp yeah absolutely yeah, yeah then yeah. you know director public policy of microsoft then oh. uh, you know cto of ericsson all three mm. of them are entrepreneurs as on today sir Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and these these are people, sir, who have decided to become an entrepreneur after seeing the corporate world for about twenty twenty five years. Naturally. <laughs> so, yeah. can you imagine how much of this is an investment teaching yeah, entrepreneurship yeah. Long run, today? Yeah, yeah. It's a long run thing, sir. Long run thing. So you know, ah, uh, so somebody who will who will get that bug, yeah, yeah, can at least use this education after five years of working in corporate. Somebody will use yeah. it during mid career yeah, crisis, as we call it, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I was uh, when I was with I am Lucknow. Uh, uh, you know, average because this was executive education campus. The average mm-hmm. uh, experience of every mm-hmm. uh, student used to be about sir eight uh, to twelve years. That was the average experience. Oh, mm-hmm. so you know that was the time people decided to leave the jobs. So uh, we have uh, we used to have you know uh, students come from ST Microelectronics, then Samsung. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know, yeah. couple of them quit their job. They said we can use all our savings and try and become an entrepreneur for once if the awesome. institute is supporting us. Really, hmm. good achievement, ma'am. Real good exactly. achievement. Exactly. <laughs> so, sir, it takes time. I agree. It takes but time. Then, yeah, but then, but then, not short term. Exactly, sir. Up. Uh, so, oh, absolutely. So the only yeah. thing I'm suggesting is like just like we te- still teach maths and chemistry. I don't know if we still teach chemistry, <laughs> but yeah. If no, no, still... chemistry is there. It's there. First Achha. year, first year chemistry. chemistry so there. why why can't we teach entrepreneurship also, sir? Yes, we did we'll like talk. investment. We'll talk. We'll take this thing. Uh, Absolutely, we'll sir. Yeah. Ma'am, where are you stationed? Uh, you are, I'm in Noida, sir. I'm in Noida. Okay, Noida. Yes. You know, if you are if you are here, by thought of inviting you to give a lecture to our students in the university. But anyhow, I will talk to Ravi that it is possible, uh, you know, to take your valuable time for some time. 
अर्जुन सर Yeah. So you know, uh, ha. So you know, be the drona chare who's scouting for an Arjun. That's my <laughs> idea, sir. Yes. Right. Awesome. Right. So uh, yes, sir. But uh, let me just tell you about you mm-hmm. know uh, other of these entrepreneurship engagement models and what can work. And if mm-hmm. anybody else has tried any of these and you still have challenges, you can talk to me. Sure. So. Uh, i talked about the e cell or the innovation cell and as i suggested uh, you know you can only excite them mm. please don't expect them to become innovate uh, innovators immediately it mm. takes time it's a mindset change yeah yeah you know? yeah and then comes the entrepreneurship development which is i'm proposing could be a credit course mm. so you know the university if it can have you know as i said mm. maths and chemistry and so many other subjects yeah, you yeah. know uh, i think we can as well uh, teach them uh, you know one credit paper we are one subject yeah yeah absolutely so we can look at entrepreneurship as one paper make it a mandatory program sir yeah. so you know give them university credits right? yeah okay. let there be a question uh, yeah let there be a paper around it yeah yeah then there are uh, there is this aict approved degree program which is called mba in iev No, so uh, cup, uh, yeah so couple of universities like i also used to teach at delhi technological university mm-hmm. so even jss has got approval this year so mm-hmm. you know this is a, a mba in innovation and entrepreneurship and new venture development mm-hmm. then sir as i talked about you know campus companies mm-hmm. so uh, and this is completely non commercial activity mm-hmm. only thing you have to do is take a business idea you know let, mm-hmm. let there be a business idea competition Mm-hmm. and give them rent free space on campus mm-hmm. to set up and operate campus companies yeah that's also a good idea that's yeah. also good ha mm-hmm. sir so just you know maybe somebody wants to run a uh, mm-hmm. and mostly you know sir you'll be surprised they'll mostly come up with solutions mm-hmm. about what is missing on the university campus yeah you're right right so you know and in case the university can provide them some seed funding mm-hmm. so you know little money some prize award which can be mm-hmm. given to them then mm. it may also look at a revenue sharing process yeah because it ha so sir this is time when they are not actually setting up a company they will not maybe register a company mm. but they'll they'll operate in a proprietary mode uh, mm. they can set up a bank account so you know mm. basic things they'll start learning they'll start learning about how to cost the raw material so you know how yeah, to yeah. source it so they they'll start to understand the basics basic, of the value chain basic team. things uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, we have. No, I'm sorry. Actually, we have yeah, a yeah. subject in MBA. Uh, in, right, sir. Uh, that, but the focus is not that much. You know, there's no that you know syllabus what uh, framed. Uh, it's not right. in uh, uh, yeah, in depth. Maybe it's for sake of introducing some subject they put it. But there is no. There should be some you know practical training. Maybe some workshop. Right, maybe conducting. Right, sir. that uh, applied the uh, um, uh, subject that is the most important and the benefits and the how right, the career will be so the focus uh, normally now we are going to discuss on those lines in fact, in fact sir you know i'll tell you as simple as if the students can learn how to create a good budget mm-hmm. and defend a budget you know i don't uh, i don't think they'll be at loss because that is something they can use in their corporate life also i mean budgeting is so important if they have to ever become uh, or run an spu i mean any kind of small business unit if they have to handle that is, uh, that, 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 that is very very important element budgeting exactly <laughs> anybody in any walk of life normally budget always will be in the foremost thing even in our normal life also Uh, exactly yeah so yeah that is also one of the aspects you know uh, so, so it's it's all about how to make it exciting for them one mm. yeah and that, that's so the thing. i would say you know 
uh, ha huh. so very importantly they should be able to relate it to you know uh, practical uh, mm. uh, approach absolutely mm. keep a practical approach about it Yeah. then there are also sir uh, entrepreneurship development programs which are typically you know certification programs which are supported by department of science and technology some are mm-hmm. supported by the state government mm-hmm. so there are these uh, entrepreneurship development programs which you know uh, the university can also uh, apply to receive funding also now we started it ma'am a plate uh, maybe in our colleges and all maybe three months back and all uh, as a statutory requirement uh, right you know apsi that is our uh, state council of for higher education qac this one right, is there they introduced it and they made it mandatory and the most of the colleges they opened the cell yeah, we call it isc then there is one director and two coordinators i mean it is uh, in the foundation level now it is in ground level now it should build up now we have to uh, you know build up the total structure and all you know all these uh, resource people you have to keep calling and uh, making them give lectures and taking them and tying up with the industry and uh, uh, you know synchronizing you know both their uh, uh, theoretical thoughts with the practical approach and all there is a long way to go we have to organize uh, Uh, a road map for this it's a long way to go right and uh, you know nice talking to you ma'am uh, nice talking to you and we look forward to hear you in future also we will right, uh, talk with our university officials also thank sure, you very sir. much ma'am for your input thank you sir thank you thank you so aapne hi aapne right and uh, you know another uh, way by which you know, most of the iits have engaged with the students and the startup community is by technology transfer units uh, so by setting up a technology transfer unit you know you can commercialize uh, home grown technologies so uh, in fact if you would know most of the iit incubators as we see them today were initially technology transfer units only so ttu also plays a very important role especially if your university or your institution is high on research and innovation right So you may like to look at a TTU also in house. Uh, then comes a technology business incubator. You know, it's mostly set up as a special purpose vehicle. Uh, it has a dedicated incubation space, and you know, it can also receive you know seed funding from one of the government India schemes, government of India schemes, uh, and you know, uh, it can also invest in companies. Like for example, we have uh, you know uh, uh, the Startup India Seed Fund now. we also have the department of science and technology seed fund and we also have uh, an nsdb seed fund which we had you know uh, deployed in companies and we've received returns also so uh, these are few mechanisms by which you know uh, entrepreneurship engagement can become begin at your campuses and i'm repeating it's a long term investment so you know don't worry about uh, you know what it will do because you'll be surprised what it can do and uh, you know start to engage and uh, you know if possible so i'm putting it very humbly if possible please do not uh, you know uh, recruit another professor or you know somebody who doesn't have practical understanding to you know run the show so please hire somebody who's been an entrepreneur or hire somebody you know who at least has been in industry you know so that the person can bring some linkages some practical linkages right and while you know uh, it can be put under uh, an academic department and you know the professor can be the chair person for the incubator but then you know my request is when you hire a coordinator look at somebody you know who can uh, uh, who can really matlab add a lot of you know practical perspective to the whole thing uh, so uh, also i i think i had remember uh, i had seen a question in the chat box which was around patents for startups so you know uh, it's not mandatory for startups to have patents in fact some of them prefer to keep their innovation in as you know, open innovation which is okay because you know they feel that somebody else can work on it or build on it uh, but then it's always important for the startups to have uh, you know uh, 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 innovation protected if they can you know so it could be even in form of trademark 
So, you know, they can get their company trademarked. They can, you know, look at some design patent if there is a design intervention. So there are other forms as well. You know, it's not just about uh, a technology patent. There are other other uh, forms of protection. Because it gives definitely gives a competitive edge to the startup companies. So uh, thank you. That was all from my side. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to take. Ma'am, there is a question from Abhimanyu Goel. Right, I'll just come to main screen. Yeah, I'm back. Abhimanyu, what is the right time to commercialize? The right time to commercialize is, uh, you know, uh, when you, you know that uh, the solution which you've created is being accepted by at least 100 people and they're ready to pay for it. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I have uh, right. two more uh, queries. May I ask? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Ma'am, uh, I have uh, came across a word called growth, uh, growing organically. What does it mean? Okay. Can you? So there are two. Like... Okay, so there are uh, you know the two type of major terms which work. One is growing organically and growing inorganically. So when you raise, uh, you know, when you are bootstrapped. So this is another term which means that when you uh, apply your own friend and family money, you know, and uh, you uh, uh, look at, you know, uh, working with your own revenues, right? Like what, uh, and maybe you, if you take some bank loan, you re repay it with money only. So, you know, you repay it with the revenues you've received. Then this is called organic growth. So you're growing organically. You're using your own money and, you know, you're putting that money or investing that money or venture and you're growing your business. That's organic growth. The second type is inorganic growth, right? Which is when you receive uh, external funding or you receive investor money, right? So you use that money to grow inorganically. So, you know, uh, uh, you achieve uh, not just, you know, 2x or 3x growth, but you look at, you know, achieving the 10x, 20x, 100x growth. But then the money is coming from outside. And in lieu of that, you have to give a part of your company also. Okay, so this is inorganic growth. Uh, you can read more about it. So if you can uh, do a quick Google search, you'll read more about it. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, I have one more query. Like, uh... yeah. It is a major yeah. problem with the students. They have the ideas, but at uh, some point of uh, that idea, they stop it. They hold themselves back. What could be done in this particular aspect? How we can encourage them? What could be done from your... Uh, uh, can you set some light from your experiences? So, uh, Abhimanyu, very importantly, you know, you can only act as a facilitator. To become a startup or not become a startup is completely their choice. Right. Uh, all you can do is create that excitement, create that buzz. Uh, you know, you can look at uh, incentivizing them, but don't look at overfunding them. It will again kill their business because the moment they'll step out of the incubator or they'll step out in the real world and they'll not be able to make that much money to run their expenses. They'll not know what to do with it. So don't give them a lot of money. Just give them the incentive to be an entrepreneur. Right. And, uh, you know, mostly uh, there's another problem which happens uh, with students, you know, in colleges and universities is that, uh, you know, the partnerships break pretty fast. Uh, so I mean that, you know, if there are three friends who've come together to form a company or to, you know, create an idea and, you know, uh, uh, convert it to a startup. And if one or two of them pick up a job, then it will anyways break up. So, you know, this is another big challenge which we have to accept. What can actually happen is in case, you know, the college can support them and, you know, find another uh, co-founder, then there could be a possibility that it may survive. But finding co-founders is not easy because, as I said, you know, it's mostly the founder's philosophy which leads to a venture. So, you know, uh, 
there are some companies or there are some investors you know if they have created a very high uh, high worth technology then there are a couple of these venture funds which you know take up such uh, startups and they you know turn it around they they uh, take management control but that happens you know if they have millions of clients not uh, at too early stage so uh, i would say you will have to live with it it's a hard fact but that's what mostly happens that's why the partnerships break okay thank you ma'am yeah but as i said earlier you know we keep investing in them you yes, know hope that you know one day they can use this yes ma'am see let's I'm also sure and, and, yeah hi hi jayshree i'm also a you know road track club coordinator here uh huh i got to know uh, we received a call from your end mm -hmm. yes 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 ma'am okay okay mm -hmm. jayshree do you have a question from me definitely ma'am definitely we are actually already working on it i wanted to contact you but i was looking forward for your uh madam i think jayshree is in some other call i think i know i thought so yeah looks like right any other quick questions otherwise we are yeah i think uh, i'm holding you from your lunches right i think host we can close the session if that's okay yes ma'am thank you ma'am for the valuable information it's an immense immense pleasure to have you on the cdp that concludes the morning session and i request all the participants to join the third session at 2:30 in the afternoon thank you right thank you so much everyone